Hey everyone, uh, post-production Wib here. Uh, I've just come in to say that uh, this podcast was recorded like two weeks ago, so there's a few references to things, like a gig we're going to play, that are wildly out of date at this point. Uh, sorry, but um, it's just late. I'm, I'm sorry. Anyway, the podcast. <laughs> Hello and welcome to episode 129 of the Miss Amphipod. I'm Drumblebee and as always I'm joined by Wib. Say hello. Hello. And as you can tell by the fact that it's me doing this intro and not Snipe, unfortunately Snipe is not with us today. Oh, that makes uh, it sound no, worse. That makes not. it sound worse than it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is this is how we choose to announce. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, Snipe is fine. Snipe is fine. Um uh, she's just uh, not been sleeping recently, and um, she's taken some drugs that make her sleep. Uh, legal drugs. <laughs> that also makes legal it drugs sound you worse can than buy. It. You can buy legally <laughs> in the UK, um, and and it's uh, yeah. She's she's basically heavily sedated, and this podcast was already late enough, and so uh, yeah, we just. Because <laughs> if you hadn't noticed, ahead. there is technically a schedule to the, for this thing. Uh, <laughs> I think at this point, I, I, I think that's. I'm not sure that's true, uh, but yeah. So uh, she is fine, um, but just sedated, and so it probably isn't a good idea to have her, um, you know, on on a podcast in that state. So uh, since this is, the podcast is one of the few things that she does read the comments on, uh, if you want to leave her a nice comment uh, on the YouTube's, please feel free. Good. Um, how are, how are you doing, Web? I am okay. I am okay. How are you doing? Yeah, I, I'm good, thank you. Good, good. Okay, so I've got a few little um, housekeeping things to go over. Okay, yeah. Uh, before we get into the podcast proper. So um, first <laughs> up, sorry to continue. Po- podcast proper definitely didn't tri- didn't make me laugh. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so first off, um, our, our YouTube channel hit 40,000 subscribers, uh, oh, which is of nice. course a, a notable <laughs> milestone considering that most of our content is Warhammer 40,000 related. Um, so yeah, thank you everybody, um, for watching and listening to our ridiculous bullshit, uh, for far too many years. Um, <laughs> yeah, really. Thank you everybody. Uh, we do have... A 40,000 subscriber special thing in the works. It's just taking a while to make. So, you know, it's a thing. Um, Hopefully early next month it'll come out. So, yeah. Mm, Colour me intrigued. Uh, uh, Speaking of channel stuff also, um, yeah, we launched our merch as well. Um, (laughs) So you can now buy Snipe and Wib themed uh, t-shirts and mugs yeah, currently. Mug, the mugs. I mean, the t-shirts are great, don't get me wrong, but the mugs. <laughs> chef's kiss. Oh. <laughs> they are powerful. <laughs> they are um, excellent. And I love that they exist in the real world. <laughs> <laughs> there will be a link in the description um, if you're interested in getting, in getting some. Uh, I think currently uh, there are two mugs... Um, one of which is a terrible shit posty mug. Uh, well, actually, they're both kind of are. One of them's a cartoon <laughs> I drew ages ago. Um, you can also get the winged crest logo um, on on a shirt, and you can get a fight weapon future year shirt for people who remember that joke from one of the early Codex compliance. Uh, and there's also an uncooperative Thursday shirt uh, if you watch um, the streams that Snipe and Longfang do on Thursdays. Uh, there is another one that. Um, hopefully should be going up uh, a few days after you hear this, in theory. Ooh. Hopefully. Maybe. We'll see. <laughs> um, but yeah. Uh, oh yeah, aside from that, um, we all played um, a gig on <laughs> yeah. uh, a few days ago. Because <laughs> uh, yeah, if people aren't 
aren't aware. I know I say this every time, but like I, I it's I presume people when they hear an episode of this podcast, like if they're new and they listen to this podcast, they don't go back and listen to all of them because they, a lot of them are kind of time like yeah. Dependent. I mean, I know a, a, quite a few people who've emailed in and said they've list they've like found it for whatever reason and gone through and listened to they nearly always say the backlash of episodes which makes me super happy um (laughs) but yeah a few people have gone back and gone Mm. and gone back from the start but i think yeah probably not not the majority yeah i don't like to assume no no uh but yeah uh all of us uh including those of us that are not here are in a band a ska band called uh fighting evil is cool we're aware the name is silly uh and we played our first gig after the pandemic, or say after mm. the pandemic, it's still a thing, but, <laughs> yeah. um, you know, after lockdown and everything, um, because we'd we'd been on a hiatus anyway, and we played like one gig a year, and yeah, we're wanting to play gigs, and so we finally played a gig again. We did. Uh, we had... <laughs> I realised that we played it without us having a proper practice uh, because we had two practices yeah. and uh, neither of them was every member present. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, our bass section wasn't at one, and then she came to one, and then me and Snipe both had to miss that one. So it was not the most well prepared. Mm. I, I think we muddled through. I think we did quite well, uh, considering. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah. Uh, it was a lot of fun, and I just want to say thank you to um, the people who, you know, listen to this bullshit and watch our channel and stuff, uh, who did come down. Um, in particular, um, Hobby and Slow, and Hobby's mum, who came down, <laughs> and to um, Topor and Longship, who both uh, gave us some lovely uh, mm. lovely little gifts, uh, which was very thoughtful, and um, yeah, thank you. Uh, I don't ever get used to that, but thank you very much. <laughs> But yeah, it was a really fun gig. I enjoyed it a lot. It was. Um, And we're doing it again in like, well, depending on when this comes out, possibly next weekend. Yeah, I'm going to try and put this one out like as soon as possible. So Okay. Yeah, Uh, we're doing it again. Yeah. Uh, So if you missed it and you wanted to go again, where the fuck are we playing? Uh, We're playing at the Rescue Rooms, which I've always, I've been to many gigs there and I've always wanted to play in Nottingham on the, it will be the 29th. Yeah, so yes. uh, if 20, you... 29th if you... of October, 21. Just for yes. <laughs> anyone listening in the future and goes, hang on, Saturday's not the 29th, and then get confused. So yeah, we're supporting uh, Unknown Era, isn't it? Yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we're supporting them on the 29th at the Rescue Rooms in Nottingham. So if you're around Nottingham and you want to come see us, uh, yeah, you can do that. And then stay for the other bands. Uh, they're better than us. <laughs> um <laughs> But yeah, no, so uh, we're getting back into that stuff, which is fun. It's fun. I've missed it a lot. I didn't realise how much I'd miss it until um, until we didn't do it for a yeah, couple of absolutely, years. Absolutely, absolutely. Because obviously we, 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 we did like at least a gig a year while we were on a hiatus just to kind of keep our eye in, but not doing it for like a solid two years because of the, the, the world ending. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I was. I really missed it, and it's it's weird because I I don't really think of myself as someone who is is good in front of people, but mm. I, I guess I, I guess I do like playing music <laughs> in front of people. So yeah, it's yeah. Impo- music's important, either the playing of or listening of, or I mean, not maybe not to some people, but I think yeah, <laughs> it's good. Yeah, it's good fun. Oh, and if anyone, because well, uh, we always get asked this, um, if you want uh, to hear our music. Um, if you if if you want it, you know you can get it on all of the you know services that you can buy stuff. Your iTunes, your Google Play, and yeah. stuff like that. You can stream uh, it but on all the things. Yeah, you can stream it on Spotify, and it is also all up on YouTube for free. If you know these, th- there are ways available, but um, but listen to it on Spotify if you want to do it for free, because then we get a little bit of money from it. Yeah. Um, and if you want to buy it on iTunes, double thumbs up. That is the best. Yes. Um, I think all of our stuff's up there, apart from the first yeah. EP because it's shit. Oh um, yeah, yeah, that doesn't count. But that's on YouTube if you really must listen to it. <laughs> um, I forgot that. <laughs> yeah. Excellent. But yeah, I suppose we should get into what this podcast is yes. um, ostensibly supposed to be about, which is us talking about whatever popular culture we have consumed over the mm-hmm. last like five weeks, I guess now because this one is really late. Uh, so Matthew, yes. drummer Matthew, the drumbled. Matt, how are you doing, and what have you been up to? 
wow, that makes it sound grander than it is. Um, I'm doing well. I've done a bunch of stuff. Um, let's. Oh, I know. I can do good segue. So we're talking about music. I went yeah. went to another gig. Um, I've mentioned this band before. They're a band called Squid. And I just wanted to mention it again because now I've found out that they're very good live as well. I want to like <laughs> double recommend listening to them because I think I mentioned it in passing before that I was getting into them. But they're yeah. really, really good. And some of the they've got they've got a um a trumpet player in the band, so it's got brass just to tick your box, Wib. <laughs> um, it's not like prominent trumpet. It's like it's not many of the songs have like it's not like a scar trumpet where it's like you know the bit in between lyric lines is like a a, a brass riff or whatever. It's usually like background stuff more. But yeah. still, it has a trumpet quite often. Lots of cowbells usually. The the drummer's the singer, which is always satisfying to me. <laughs> um, and yeah, they're really good live. And it was that was a very a very weird experience. Being it was one of those venues where it was like lots of people, and it was the first thing like that we've done back since lockdowns eased and things. And it was like, oh, this is weird. But it made me super excited. It reminded me to actually message you guys and organise a band practice for our gig, which was, <laughs> which, was which was quite yeah. Good. Um... I actually realised that aside from the the wedding that we went to um, a few weeks back and um, there was a band playing there, I realised that playing at um, the gig we did was the first time I've been to a gig since um, COVID. And I was like, oh, yeah, shit. Okay. Yeah. And I mean, we can get into the argument of whether we should, there should be lots of people because that's in the UK right now. It's a little bit <sighs> weird. But, but... This gig actually was really good. They were like actually checking people's like either vaccine or negative test status on the way in, which was good. Mm. Um, but yeah, it was good. And I just wanted to do because um, I know some people um, occasionally want our opinions on music and want band recommendations. So definitely go listen to a band called Squid. Mm. I, I think uh, also, fun. I can say this um, without any um, ambiguity. Uh, if you want to ask us questions uh, to the podcast email about music, more specifically, ask me uh, questions about <laughs> music. I'm happy to talk about music for literally years, and I just don't get a chance to do it mm. very often. Well, that's what so, I was like, if I can start nudging it into this bit, I can be like, I can normalise it slightly, and then I can get some better recommendations off you. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and plus, so and that was that, that's that step one of the segue. So we've gone from music to squid, and then okay. from squid the band, we can go, we can tangent across to squid game, the Netflix series. Oh yeah, that um, thing that everyone is talking about. Yeah, and I so I'm not yet. going to talk. Yeah, I'm not going to. I'm going to front load this by saying I'm not going to really spoil anything because we're only we've not finished it all, and I'm aware it only came out on Netflix like I don't know two weeks ago, maybe mm. a week ago. So lots of people won't have a chance to watch it. But I just, I know that this is, okay, ever so slight spoiler, because some people think that saying whether it's good or bad is a spoiler, which I guess is fair enough. But it was one of those ones where I was like, do I want to watch this after all the, like, hype it's got? You know those ones where sometimes you're like, it's just got too much attention, I just can't be asked. But Yeah, that's kind of how, why I haven't watched yeah, it Yeah, <laughs> and that's and we've done that with a few things. But we're like, you know what, we need a new series to watch anyway. We might as well give it a try. And, oh, it's good. I'm enjoying it so much so far. Oh, good. It's, it does. It's it's sort. It's not formulaic, but it's it's on. You know, it's, the themes are similar to various other. Uh, it's not you know breaking particularly new ground there, but it does enough things differently in terms of what the main thing is about and the various subplots and and things that it's it's really enjoyable and really good so far. But I'll, mm. I'll, I won't I won't talk too much about it. I'll give people a chance to and and yourself included, Web, chance to watch it before we before we say anything. But yeah, I I would recommend not being put off by the fact that it is fucking everywhere at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's that that is a, a genuine thing. Like I, I know both Snipe and I have a real thing with that, which is when something is literally everywhere. Yeah, it's just like we mm, kind of nah, dig not... our heels in and just yeah. don't want to consume absolutely, it. Absolutely, absolutely. I've, I've I remember I was doing with it with like um, I remember I was doing it with like Stranger Things and stuff like that. Mm. Like it was everywhere overnight, and then it was like I. I'm already tired of this. I, I, <laughs> yeah. I don't have the brain space to just watch it. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> but no, no, I, I do mean to check it out because it does. What what little I know about it does seem quite uh, yeah. quite cool. Well, I will say I've, I've heard, I was reading somewhere that apparently. So we've been watching it, um, the subbed version. Um, yeah. Cause that's, that's how we prefer things. And with the English subs, it seems fine. But I was reading that apparently if you have it on like the the closed captions rather than the subtitles. So I can't, I, this, you'll be able to help out better than me. Probably there's like a difference between the actual subtitles. And then there's like the, I think it's the, it's the, um, it's the like 
English for hard of hearing. So it's like then it's sort of and it matches the English dub rather than a direct translation from what the Korean oh. is saying or something, which means okay. that and apparently the English dub as well as the sort of the closed captions that match the English dub, it isn't the best translation and loses a lot of meaning. Um, as someone who doesn't speak a single word of Korean, I have no idea. <laughs> to, like, I cannot back this up. But I was reading somewhere that if you are watching that, make sure you're on the English subtitles and not the, like, closed captions or the, the hard of hearing mm. version of it, um, apparently. Okay. <laughs> Just a pro tip that I read, but I have no way of backing up. <laughs> Yeah, I, I have heard something about that. So I, I I do believe you are right. These two people who cannot speak <laughs> Korean are going to give you advice on a Korean yeah. on translation of Korean things. But I mean, um, if you you know if you want to watch the dub and that's more your jam, go for it. Don't let anyone tell you different. But I prefer the sub, and I personally think mm. it's a slightly more authentic experience, maybe. But there's all manner of reasons why I prefer the dub, and you know what? If you enjoy it more that way, go for it. I suppose. Yeah, yeah. There's the, occasionally there are some things where like um, I think I mentioned this when I was watching uh, uh, when I talked about Godzilla Singular Point, um, which um, I, I watched subtitled because I that, that's I, I always watch anything uh, you know any foreign film I'll always watch it with subtitles first, and then I might watch it with the dub when I, on subsequent viewings. Um, but because everyone speaks really, really, really fast and they're talking about weird. Um, obtuse in universe science nonsense <laughs> um back and forth it became really hard to read uh, and follow it reminds me a bit of um, the old excel saga anime huh. uh, which is one of the five animes i have actually watched yeah. um <laughs> uh, and uh, that sometimes people just spoke so fast it actually became kind of hard to keep up with uh, so sometimes that is that is a thing um but yeah um there's, there's a lot of reasons why, you know, you might prefer one over the other. So, yeah. It depends a lot on the thing as well. So, Hmm. Um, well, so most of what we've been doing is TV series, honestly. Uh, what else have we watched? Oh, there's been a new series of, of Sex Education. Did you ever watch that? Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I, I've I've not got around to watching any of it, so I oh, haven't okay. seen, seen the new one. It... I've heard this, because, uh, yeah, I know you're a fan of it, and I've heard there yeah. are some some cool things in this yeah series. i mean the whole series in general is like super like sex positive and like identity positive is that a phrase that you, you know <laughs> what i'm trying to say it's like really, yeah it's yeah it's really good at a lot of things um it's like really inclusive and really yeah it's one of those ones where it's just like yeah if, if you actually watch this as like a teenager to get some of your actual like sex education from it would probably do a lot better than a lot of the crap that they do actually at school <laughs> <laughs> yeah um, which i guess is why it's called that is that's the kind of the joke um yeah there's some really good bits in this one there's um there's a couple of new characters who are non-binary so it sort of I, I i sort of addresses that for a bit and it's um and there's there's a really there's a really like honest um conversation about hiv and aids which you don't really oh. ever you when you see it in media it's a, it's a lot of you know there's very there's a lot of things that that address it from like in like the 80s point of view and things when it was you know a lot more of a endemic and things and before much was known about it there's like historical or not not historical stuff but like things that are set back then yeah but there's it's, not you're, that much you're either viewing sort of a, things a, a modern take on it, and it don't, it's not a main plot point it's just mentioned in passing but it's like it just it says right you know there's a lot of you can get like prep to do things it says there's all these and it just sort of tells you a few sort of facts along there and it, which i was re- re- reading about that people are like quite glad well, quite glad with how they how they dealt with that. So there's like loads of different sort of sex adjacent issues that it just does really well. And then it's also got really funny bits as well, with being a comedy. So yeah, I <laughs> yeah, if you haven't watched any of it, I definitely give it a go. Hmm. I mean, aside from all of that, it's just a you know teenagers will they won't they that sort of thing. So the actual if you boil it down to just the main plot, it's like yeah, it's just you know teenagers having relationships and whatever but the way it's done yeah i mean but you can say that about basically well piece okay of media, yeah. can't you <laughs> <laughs> yeah fair fair um i still find it weird that it's filmed in like either wales or the welsh border but it's sort of set in the states but also definitely not but slightly is like the town yeah. the town where it's filmed is called moordale and like it's got this like it's like called moordale high or whatever the school is and then it's 
um, there's no school uniform. Everyone's there's no school uniforms or anything, which most senior, high, secondary, whatever you call them, schools in the UK have. Mm. And then that Moordale has its own like TV channel, like Moordale MD TV or something, which is like the town's TV channel. And there's like all these things okay. where it's like that's just not how it works in the UK. But then, and there's like and all the cars are like from the seventies, but not all of them. It's not set in the seventies because they've all got phones. And then like. You meet you meet some rich knobhead at one point, and he's got like a brand new car, and he like so it's not all the cars are seventies cars, but it just doesn't ever really mention it. And it's 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 weird. It's really cool, but I can't still can't quite. Yeah. Okay, I think odd. I might have worked it out. Does it mm. exist in the same universe as the Batman animated series that was sort of futuristic but also kind of set in the forties? <laughs> yeah, it's that sort of thing, and it's never addressed. And it's just like this is fine, and it is fine, but it's quite fun watching the, in the in the various details of it. <laughs> I I I think sometimes um, I think shows should intentionally do things to make canon in their world hard to follow um, <laughs> because I think the internet has ruined people's ability to consume media and just accept a world for being what it is mm. um, yeah, so yeah, I point. think I, th- I think that all media needs to take a more aggressive antagonistic stance <laughs> uh, and, and oh, just I don't un- think this is being antagonistic about it <laughs> <laughs> I know but I think but they, you, should. they should be okay right yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's am I being it? serious? I'm not 100 percent sure anymore. <laughs> uh, um, oh, Great British Bake Off started. I'm not going to talk about it because otherwise you'll just bleep me to forever. But it's, <laughs> it is what it is. It's very satisfying if you've got, and it's like it is what I will say. It is quite nice having something that still comes out weekly. Yeah, like it hasn't all come out at once and you binge on it. In fact, it's done the opposite because usually, in the in the olden days, as in like before two years ago, it was filmed week. It was filmed weekly, but it's filmed in the summer and then it comes out later on. But it was filmed weekly. Yeah, they yeah. filmed it at weekends over over the summer and then it comes out weekly in the autumn. Whereas this year, it's gone one more. Well, and same as last year, they they all got into like one bubble together, so they filmed it over a much more condensed period of time because obviously no one can get away from their lives for. 10 weeks or however long it potentially goes yeah, on for. Yeah. So it's filmed over a much more condensed period of time. So it's like the opposite. Most shows are filmed over a long period of time, but then like all all of that effort is then gone in like four hours or someone but you binge the whole series. <laughs> Whereas this is like filmed in a condensed period of time and then you can only watch one episode a week, which I'm really enjoying. It's like I've not had that moment of like excitement for the next episode for quite a while. Because it's like when things are... When things you can binge them, and don't get me wrong, I I do it and I en- I enjoy it. But you watch one and you're like, oh, it's a bit late, but oh, god, let's just watch one more episode. <laughs> but knowing that you can't, you're like, nope, gotta wait a week for this. It's, there's something quite satisfying about it, and it just doesn't happen that often anymore. I, I think, and I'm not um, just complaining that oh, that you know, the new way is a lot worse and it used to be better <laughs> in the old day. Not at all, but it is quite nice being forced to do it like, a bit differently. I mean, to be fair, like I've been because I've been watching um, the various Star Wars, Star Trek, and Marvel stuff. Um, those of pretty much all those have come out weekly. So mm, okay, yeah. So yeah. I have been so I've, I've by necessity watched those weekly. Except yeah, well, it just for, seemed to be quite a Netflixy thing, yeah. and all those Star Wars ones are all on Disney Plus, right? Yeah, actually thinking about it, it's more Netflix that does that. I mean, granted, um, they didn't do it with um, Discovery, uh, which they've got um, for mm. Star Trek. Um, so. Some things do work like that, but yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. Right, very last thing I was going to talk about is a, okay. is, is another TV series. Um, it was called Feel Good. Um, it's a comedy on probably Netflix. <laughs> it's, it's a comedy question mark well, on yeah, Netflix? But, okay, question mark? Less, of a question, less of a question mark on Netflix, definitely a question mark on comedy. So it's um, by a comedian called May Martin. Yeah. Who I'd actually heard on various podcasts and things before, but I had no idea what they looked like. Um, and it's sort of autobiographical. Like May Martin, she or she's a she at the start of the series, and I, th- I think and I think now she goes by she or they. So okay, I think they're happy with both. So I might mix and match a bit just out of being an idiot, but I think that's okay in this in this situation anyway. Um, but they wrote it and they star in it 
and they play a character called May Martin. So I, it's mostly autobiographical, I think, but presumably exaggerated at times and possibly not at other times, which makes it slightly worrying. Just like the autobiographical just... show Seinfeld. Um, I've never watched Seinfeld. I... I honestly don't think I could tell you what it was about if you asked me. I mean, it's... Is it about someone called Seinfeld? Well, the main character is Jerry Seinfeld, played by Jerry Seinfeld, and its ta- and its um, like tagline it was known by uh, in its like inception was the sh- like I think it's it was something like the show about nothing. Okay, good. Um, it, it's it's hinged largely on how much um, you can deal with Jerry Seinfeld. Uh, I have a very low Seinfeld tolerance um, on account of Jerry Seinfeld being a wanker. Um, so. <laughs> But I didn't know he was a wanker uh, when it was still new. And um, yeah, I think I only ever saw episodes of it because it was like um, on after something I actually did watch. And when I'd videotape it, occasionally I'd get an episode of Seinfeld and sometimes I'd watch it and um, (laughs) regret. I don't know. A lot of people like Seinfeld. I've never really got it. Yeah, fair. I mean, yeah, I have. Anyway, continue talking about this relevant yes. show you were talking so, about as opposed show. to the bullshit um, I was saying. So yeah, autobiographical in sort of quotation marks, I guess. And so they're a comedian, originally from Canada, but moved to the UK, presumably London, but I actually had have no idea. Um, 10 years ago? I can't remember. Mm. Something like that. And yeah, it's about them and they and like their relationships and she meets someone and they and um, then it goes on about... It's... She has various issues relating to things that happened in the past, and it sort of explores that. Like, it's meant to be a comedy, and there is very, very funny laugh out loud moments, but it gets. There's, okay, trigger warning for, ooh, I mean, lots of things. Various, like, abusive relationships and like, drug use and l- various things like that. And it's it's one of those comedies that's, like, gets a bit heavy, but. Mm. You know that. It's hopefully going to work out because it is autobiographical. You know that it's not too bad, if that makes sense. I don't know. It's I don't really know what I want to say about it, really. There's, but <laughs> which is not great for podcast form. Um, <laughs> it's fine. It's, you just you just say it's it's got a vibe, and it it's, does. It's yeah. yeah. It's one of those ones where I was like, I'm probably going to fall down. Various traps, and I should have—I I should have made a prepared statement, really. I, imagine, I think, <laughs> but I mean, is it know. one of those things where be- it, it's um, sometimes comedy about bleak situations can help? Um, it, it helps talk about dark situations in a way that feels less crushing because mm. it's in a comedy format, so you know things are gonna. Kind of, you know, things are going to bounce back because that's the nature of that kind of medium. Yeah. Um, yeah. But it still yeah. allows them to talk about the things as well. Um. Yeah, and and yeah, I mean, the plot is just following them around. They go to, they've they've had various drug addictions in the past, and they're sort of you know once an addict, always an addict kind of thing. So still occasionally mm. going to like, um, meet various meetings and things and. Their relationships and the relationship with their parents, which is interesting. And it's what's really nice about it is that they don't come across, they, you know, there's there's good parts and there's bad parts. They don't portray themselves as like a goodie, which is quite a lot of autobiographical things might do. But all of the like other people around, a lot of the side characters, there's there's so many nice people involved, and it's really nice to see that as like, <laughs> oh, if these were based off real people, it's really nice to see that that's what they think about these people. I don't know, it's a fun one, but. Yeah, it's got some really interesting. Oh, I'm not. I'm not doing it any justice, and I can't think of what to say <laughs> about it, honestly. And now I'm like getting a bit flustered, so I'm going to make it worse. But <laughs> I okay. would recommend giving it a go. With, okay. but it might be worth double checking. I don't. Is there websites where you can check like trigger warnings for things? What's that? There's uh, always one. Do, I forgot uh, what it's called. Does the dog die? Yeah, check that first. Um, because I probably couldn't list all of the various potential triggers or issues it might have. For you because it covers a lot of ground um mm. so if you are you know if, if if you do have something that would really put you off a show check that first because chances are it could be there um 
But at its funniest, it's absolutely laugh out loud hilarious, and at its darkest, it, in, it explores some like really interesting um, topics in a really sort of good way. I think. Hmm. Um, cool. Yeah, and it's just a yeah comedy about someone's life, really. So it's <laughs> yeah. I, I I would recommend it was really good, and I've done it no no justice at all. Um, but yeah, feel feel good. Check it out. And it, okay. yeah, feel good is not a good title for it. I think probably <laughs> into, prob- probably intentionally. You 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 laugh a lot and then don't feel great. Um. <laughs> like <laughs> I feel like oh. shit. Yeah. So you know, potential spoons needed, etc. But yeah. But yeah. I, it's it's really good, and I want. It's one of those ones where there's there's two series of it, and I really want there to be more, but I also really don't want there to be more. And I think it is finishing after that, and I think this is this is it done, hmm. um, as far as I'm aware, which is quite good because I was a bit worried that they might like switch out, and it becomes just it loses impact. Yeah, I I mean I, I I've you know I I don't know if this is something that I've I've said much during this podcast or whatever, um, but I know I know it's something that I I used to say a lot because it was very pertinent. Uh, which was, I miss when shows would just end mm. uh, after a couple of seasons. No, because... no, they need to set up the multiverse. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay, this is this is a tangent. I don't get why people give a shit about multiverse stuff and all crossovers and stuff. Like, I, it, it's it's fun, like in isolation, like occasionally, but like there's always oh, going to have like a multiverse. It's like okay. It's already a big shared universe. Like, if you're talking like Marvel or whatever, okay. Like, because I, I maybe it's because the end point of that is just the 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 IP slurry that is things like Ready Player One, um, <laughs> or Fortnite, or fucking apparently the Space Jam movie that came out. Oh yeah, I, I haven't seen that, but yeah. <laughs> God, I saw it. I, 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 there was a scene someone uploaded of like just an uncut scene of it, and it was like a YouTube poop. It was ridiculous. <laughs> Um, I I don't get it. I don't get the af- affinity with multiverse things. It's it, it's like some things do it can can do some fun with it. Uh, Into the Spider Verse did some fun with it. Um, but I don't know. It just I I don't get the appeal like of it as like a concept. Um, but then I am also the type of joyless person that thinks that the <laughs> X Men should never be in the mainline Marvel canon. Well, yeah, but, uh, because they don't yeah. make sense. It just doesn't um, make any much. sense. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm with you on that. One. Ah, yes, these mutants, these are the bad ones that can be the allegory for whatever, um, like, um, like minority we're we're wanting to do in this story. But also, there's a bunch of other people who also have effectively the same powers, but they're heroes in this world, and everyone's like cool with them. Yeah, and but they had they're, you... they're not mutants though. They they had gamma radiation <laughs> or, or, yeah. or or something. And yes, you can argue that bigotry doesn't use logic so that would also mm. kind of make sense but it does undermine so many of the stories when like oh yeah Captain America just fucking shows up like alright <laughs> yeah but yes carry on talking about things you, you actually um, were talking about <laughs> but that's it that's, that's a big list of TV series that I've been I've okay. been watching um, yeah not, I've not played a computer game for bloody ages <laughs> I mean, you you have a good excuse. Yeah, one day I'll have time to do that again. But I mean, I realised I was even saying this when I was like unemployed in France and had all the time in the world, and I was just like, oh, if only I had more time. But I spent the whole time playing fucking paper clips or whatever it was that I did over there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I mean, I'd say now that I one day I'll have time, but I mean that's just objectively not true. Apparently, that is yeah, just not true. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Wib, what have you been up to? Okay, okay. Um, this is going to be a long one. I've I've been okay, up to good. many things. Uh, so uh, first off, I just just give a little shout out to a couple of videos that I have been in. Um, Ooh, okay. One uh, is one where I actually did the full narration for uh, an episode of Forty K Theories over on Remlazer's channel. Mm. Um, so yeah, it's the uh, oh I should have written down the actual title. I think it's the Genetic Heritage of the Storm Wardens. Um. So yeah, uh, I you asked me to do that, so I did that. So yes, yeah, if did, if did you, you want to hear, yeah, yeah, um, and if you want to hear me talk for fifteen minutes solid, uh, and you don't want to listen to the rest of this podcast, <laughs> uh, then that's the thing. 
Uh, and I also cameoed in a video about um, the 1998 TriStar Godzilla, uh, a sort of defense of it for not being as bad as everyone uh, says it is, on uh, David J. Bradley's channel, yeah. uh, which was really nice nice to do, uh, to, to appear in a little cameo in, because obviously 99% of the things uh, we appear in is Warhammer related, so to appear in something completely unrelated to that was really nice. Um since I'm already talking about putting links in the description, I'll pop links to both those videos in the description, <laughs> and you can go and watch them. And you should absolutely, and you should especially go watch, um, like, David's video, because it's, it's got nowhere near enough views for, like, how much effort was put into it. Not the, Re- <laughs> not the Rems video, it is, uh, okay, I'm just going to dig a hole if I say that. <laughs> <laughs> His video is also good, but it doesn't have... It has many more views, so it's fine. Um, <laughs> so, are you, have you? Did you? Have you been persuaded round to this, the view that it's not as bad as everyone says? Oh, I, I already held that opinion. Oh, okay. um, I, I, I think that the 1998 TriStar Godzilla is a perfectly acceptable monster movie. That, that's the it's, one with Jamiro Cry, right? Yes, yes. <laughs> it's it's only kind of a bit. It's it, it's only kind of bad when you treat it as if it should be the same as an old Godzilla movie, and it's not trying to be. Um, it's not like it's perfect or anything, because I don't think it is, um, but it's certainly no when it, it's not the complete travesty that people treat it as. You could you can watch it and have a good time. Yeah, I mean, I remember enjoying it as a kid, but like, yeah. I, I think that was probably the only Godzilla film. I, yeah. I had not seen any of the, any, any other Godzilla film, I don't think, at that point. Yeah, and um, and as not to give spoilers for the video, but um, honestly, it, when you know, um, there are a lot of ways you can think about the movie that are honestly more fitting to the Godzilla mold than it initially feels like it is. So, it's in- in- interesting watch. Um, hmm. uh, but speaking of things, I am not in. Uh, <laughs> I have watched a lot of TV shows, a lot. Um, <laughs> So, uh, first up, I'll just I'll just do a couple of quick ones first, uh, which is uh, Lower Decks season two uh, just wrapped up, uh, and that has been really good. Uh, really enjoyed it. Um, it had Jeffrey Coombs in an episode, which means it is now in the upper echelons of um, Star Trek, <laughs> uh, because <laughs> New Trek has uh, the fact that New Trek hasn't had Jeffrey Coombs in it yet until this one episode was an absolute travesty because um he's great <laughs> um but yeah no uh lower deck season two continued like being um what it was in season one where you know it mixed comedy and star trek really well but also made the characters really likable and had and did some fun turnarounds on things from the canon that you know, the main stuff can't really deal with for whatever reason. Um, we do find out that um, someone has got the... Uh, in their private collection has the skeleton of Big Spock from that <laughs> one episode of Star Trek, the animated series that Longfang and I did uh, an episode uh, an episode of our podcast, Men With Funny Heads On, uh, Infinite Vulcan, it's called. Uh, and there is a giant Spock in it, and so yes, the skeleton is in a private collection now. So, um, okay, good. Yeah, it's just it's just really good. Uh, genu- genuinely, a lot of fun, and uh, the way they left it uh, sort of opens up for some them actually doing some cool stuff, like just story wise. I don't want to give anything away because it aired like a handful of days ago when we're recording this. Uh, but it does some some interesting stuff where it looks like season three is going to set up to have a bit more of a story to it, like an overarching story. Because most of the episodes are just singular. They'll have stuff that ties into things that happen in other episodes, certainly. But they're all kind of... You can watch a lot of them standalone, which, yeah. honestly, I didn't realise how much I missed until... Um, until watching it. Because a lot of, you know, the new Trek, like Picard and Discovery, has you know been serialized heavily yeah, so you, yeah, you yeah. can't really it's not like you can go oh i'm gonna you know i'm gonna go watch that one episode of discovery because it's like mid-season and just is you know a bit yeah. you know doesn't really entice to things either side of it which is why when i want to go back and watch star trek i'll usually go watch like tng or something because you can just drop into an episode of that and drop out like it doesn't really matter um 
but yeah, lower decks is good. But um, okay, fuck it. I was going to do this in another order, but who cares? Um, <laughs> okay. Uh, speaking of Star Trek, but with jokes, I watched <laughs> the entirety of the Orville, or at least what's been made ah. of it so far, because that came onto Disney Plus. Um, so I could finally watch it without having to pay more money than I was already paying. Um, and yeah, I went into it kind of with the the perspective of I had been told that it was really good, but also so this is made... for, for those who don't know this is the um, Star Trek made by Seth MacFarlane. Yes, it is also made by Seth MacFarlane. And Seth MacFarlane has made, and I think I can, I don't think I say this as an exaggeration, some absolute wank. <laughs> uh, and his sense of humour <laughs> is one that, as a 35-year-old, I find mostly just a bit juvenile. And I don't really want to engage with. Mm. But so not even I, in like a fun juvenile way. No, just in a, in a like, that's just Ugh. not funny. Like, yeah. I find I like I, I used to like Family Guy when I was younger, but like then I grew up. Um, <laughs> you still like Family Guy? Fair enough. I give a shit. You know, me me personally, that's how I interact with it. Uh, and the trailers that I'd seen for it kind of made it look to look a bit shit because it was it was forefronted with a lot of the comedy. Um, and so I went into it with sort of like the knowledge that a lot of people whose opinions I trust say it's good, but also braced just in case (laughs) yeah um and i've got to be honest i was quite pleasantly surprised even by the first season which a lot of people say or you know was not generally regarded anywhere near as well as um the uh, the second season which you know was a lot better um so yeah if you're not familiar if, if you've not got around to watching it or you don't know what it is um, so the Orville is effectively Star Trek The Next Generation with its serial numbers filed off and with jokes. So it's a comedy. Um, everything about the way it is shot and directed and edited and scored um, is straight from 90s Star Trek, which makes sense. Seth MacFarlane is a huge Star Trek fan. I mean, hell, he's a he's a reoccurring guest character in engineering in Enterprise. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's based around uh, Seth MacFarlane's character, whose name escapes me now because it's been like <laughs> it's been like three <laughs> weeks since I watched it all, and so basically I'm not going to remember anyone's names. Um. But he he gets command he he gets command of a ship and his first officer is his ex wife, um, who he caught cheating on him and she's the reason why he was able to finally get a posting because she kind of called in a favor, and so that that's sort of a bit of the central kind of tension in the early season, um, of them trying to get along and they've obviously got a lot of issues to work through, um. Both of them does and says shitty things and, you know, has done. Um, and, yeah, the main the main thing is, like, very, very Star Trek-y. Like, everything about the way it works. Some of the episodes are straight up and you go, yeah, I know exactly what Star Trek episode you are riffing on right now. Uh, there's one where they all get placed in a zoo and it's like, yes, I too have seen The Cage. <laughs> um and uh yeah it, it's it's really derivative really fucking derivative like to the point that at times you do go why did they not just make this be <laughs> i'm sure they like uh, this, this this is just star trek like <laughs> no if and and or buts but it's a really interesting series um because the the comedy and the serious, well, you know, sci-fi stuff is intermingled in, like, varying ways. Um, at the start, it means that, you know, a few times an episode, they'll, you'll just have to deal with the fact there's a very unfunny joke. 
um, but the rest of the episode is quite quite good, and the and um, the characters are endearing. Um, hell, Seth MacFarlane plays a likable character. I, I like huh. his character. He's it's like he's not perfect or anything, but like he's he's often charming, and he's fundamentally a good person. Like, huh. hey. No one's ever said that about Seth MacFarlane before. No, it's it's <laughs> shocking. I was I mean, not I expecting. Maybe, maybe he's a nice guy in real life. I obviously don't. Yeah, know I don't him, know but... anything about him in real life. No. Um, I I don't care to know either. No. Um, but yeah, and so you've got these kind of like cool characters, and it starts setting up the world um, and doing interesting things with it. But then it's just like, oh yeah, this character will then tell a really bad joke out of nowhere, and it will kind of like drag a scene down. Like it's basically you just have to like switch your brain off for like five seconds every now and again um but on the other side so can i just ask quickly is it is it a comedy that's also a sci-fi or is it a sci-fi that's also a comedy if that makes sense like is it it meant to be or is it kind of both and it just is that's an interesting question um I'd say at the start it was a bit more of a comedy that was a sci-fi and um, we'll get to where it ends up. Okay. Um, and the, the thing is, like, yeah, this, this, kind of com- this kind of comedy does mean that it does give one thing that is really quite nice, which is that it means that characters, like, banter with each other and talk to each other in a much more human way than in the somewhat stilted, sexless way <laughs> that, like, people in Star Trek sometimes <laughs> interact with each other. Uh, which is quite interesting. Um, the show also has quite a lot to do with capital G gender, right? Which Seth MacFarlane gender? Yeah, I you, was, mm, okay. your asshole clenches so hard that it could, you know, condense coal into a diamond uh, when you hear that. <laughs> um, now, uh, this is mainly based around that there is a species called the Mocklands who are monogendered. Um, they're all male. Um, so that means that, by extension, all of their relationships are... They appear gay. Like, it's two men, you know. Um, and... They don't... They don't really get any humour out of that, which I was kind of surprised about. The humour comes from the fact that they're really stoic all, all the time. Like, pretty much all of them are. So when they try and be romantic, it's just weirdly stilted and weird. <laughs> um, that's more the humour than it... You know, I mean, oh, you know... It seemed to me, anyway. Um, but then they start... It's like the third episode of the show, so they go hard on this straight away. Um, there is a Mocklin born who is female, and it gets into a whole thing about them, quote-unquote, correcting that birth defect. Huh. And, yeah... I don't want to go too deep into it, not least because this is two cis men talking about um, gender issues, yeah, and there's yeah, enough yeah, there's enough of that on the internet as is. Um, but like, I was watching it, and I was going, and and I was like, this seems like fine. Like, it, it, I don't think it's handling it. Like, it's not perfect. It's not like a, a flawless thing. But I'm like, you know, this is fine. It, it's like. You know, whatever. Um, it's not being hateful, and like I think there's a few missteps here and there, but like not in a way that was like it didn't feel malicious. It just felt like maybe a few that you know they're not quite up to the bleeding edge of these discussions because it's being made like as a you know a big show to put on TV, and these things very rarely are. Um, and as the series goes on, they deal with it a lot more and they get more in-depth into things and use it to discuss other issues. Um, like there is there is a character you meet who's a Mocklin who... who... Um, he, he, likes, um, he likes women. And he has to hide that because in a monogendered society, that is wrong. Um, and yeah, there's a lot of interesting things they do with it. Um, and I, I l- actually looked it up once I'd watched the full run of the series going like, okay, this stuff seems like fine to me. Like, even when it's maybe not being perfect, it doesn't feel like there's any mal- malice in it. It just feels like it's maybe not done from like the, m- the most educated perspective, but you know, whatever. Um, and I was looking it up and it's, uh, yeah, in the general response I saw was people going, yeah, this is like about twenty years behind everyone else talking about these things. 
but by the same token, this is being made as baby's first introduction to these concepts for a lot of the people watching it, so maybe that's fine. Um, and I think I agree with that, um, that kind of thing. Because, um, yeah. But huh. uh, where, where the show kind of gets... Uh, so to put that aside, where the show kind of gets interesting is that as it goes on, it really stops being a comedy... Like, there's a couple of episodes, especially in, like, the second half of what's been released so far, where I actually had to sit there and think, where was the jokes in that episode? Ah, it just becomes a sci-fi. It just becomes, like, there's a couple of them. And especially because it gets really weird because some actors from Star Trek show up, like, um, huh. I can't remember a name. Presumably uh, the, not as the, as the, as the, the character. No. <laughs> uh, the, the actor who played Cassidy Yates, um, which is uh, the lady that Cisco marries in um, DS9. Uh, spoilers for Deep Space Nine, by the way. <laughs> um, uh, she she plays a reoccurring character on the show. Uh, it's like She's the doctor of the ship. Um, Robert Picardo shows up, the doctor from Voyager. Uh, oh, he nice. shows... He's the pair... He's the um, the father of one of the... the thing. it was one of... I, I, they disappear after a while, but one of the bridge crew is the father of one of those. Uh, Marina Sirtis shows up. Uh, Troy shows up in an episode. Um, I can't remember the actor's name, but uh, the actor that played um, Doctor Flocks in Enterprise shows up as well. Like yeah, just like, lots of things like that. <laughs> um, Jonathan Frakes directs some episodes. Um, ah, cool. Who was who was it? Uh, was it Brennan Braga? Showed up and like did some episodes as well, like another Star Trek like person. Yes, yeah, the fact it feels like Star Trek isn't a mistake. <laughs> you know, it's it's, it's yeah. an intentional yeah. thing, and yeah. there's a lot of people doing that. And as it get and as it, yeah, as it goes on, it's just like yeah, there's like some episodes where like you sit there and you go, okay, so there, there was that thing that was a joke, but that was less of a joke. That was more just comic relief, like is in any show. Because like, I make like a distinction between a a joke and humor. Because life is full of humour. Yeah. Um, so okay. yeah. that does, you know, a joke does not a comedy make. Um, yeah. And a lot of it ends up just being like that. And But there will be like one joke, capital J joke per episode at times. And you're like, all right. And then there's like a bit where there's a huge fucking space battle. Um, I remember Snipe walked in whilst I was watching it. And it's just like, it's like a season finale thing. And it's all just handled quite seriously, apart from like again one joke halfway through it that just feels really out of place. So, so did Seth MacFarlane? He just wanted to make a sci-fi, but he only could get anyone to fund it. Yeah, one, by going I, in from the "I'm Family Guy, I do jokes" point of view. I don't know if that is true, but it is one hundred percent true, <laughs> and there is not a thing and you that, will tell me that will convince me that is yeah. not and the actual pe- fact. And now people are liking that. He can get away with doing the sci-fi more. Yeah. And yeah. honestly, okay. yeah. if if for the next season they want to just ditch all of the attempts at like making it a comedy, like in the in the most I think it was in the most recent series, um, there was a, a brief replacement character who came in, who was like kind of a temp, um, and it was just an alien who was just like, yeah, dude, oh my god, yeah, and he was just like that all the time, and it was just tedious every time he was on screen. It was like such a it was one of those things where it's like, yeah, I, I understand you want you need to tell a joke this episode, and you, you're just going to put this character on screen for a bit, but can we not? Because this <laughs> stuff, like when you're just telling stories about these characters and this world, it's genuinely quite good. I enjoy the Orville. It has its caveats, of course, but you know, I think it is a good series. But I will say that, like, the reason I want to talk about that after the Lower Decks was that I think the Lower Decks manages being a comedy and Star Trek. Perfectly. As it was perfectly as anything can. Mm. Uh, whereas the Orville is just Star Trek with jokes. It oh. doesn't really handle the mixture very well. Mm, okay. And so yeah. if you're wanting to watch a comedy, the Lower Decks is a lot funnier. Also, I realized the other day that like the main character, Brad Boimler, is fucking played by the, the same guy who played... Um, Huey, uh, the main character of, um, well, the, the kind of point of view character of the boys. And I was like, oh, shit. Oh, huh. fuck. Okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, so they're an interesting comparison to see how each one has tried to handle doing those those kind of things. And I, I, it's, what, yeah, um, the Orville kind of compartmentalizes its 
its jokes off into the joke realm. Whereas mm. um, Lower Decks has it all woven into what it's doing. Uh, and I think part of that is because it is actually Star Trek. So they can just use all of the things they've got. And they yeah. can make the Star Trek jokes in universe, and it, you know, I don't know. Maybe, maybe it's other reasons, but yeah. which do you prefer out of the two? If that's not a completely meaningless question, uh... or they're just they're just both good. I'd probably say lower decks overall, but I do think they're kind of in they're even though they are both ostensibly the same concept, they both end up being so different in execution that I find it hard to actually yeah. say yeah, yeah, yeah. to compare them really. Um, but yeah, uh, I can recommend watching both of them. Give them a shot if you. I mean, I know that I'm really late to the Orville, but hey, if you haven't watched it yet, give it a shot. <laughs> um, next up, just a brief thing about What If. Uh, did you watch What If? I did not. Marvel thing. No, it's, it's, all another, right. it's another Marvel Disney Plus one. I still haven't got around to getting <laughs> Disney Plus. Yeah, it's fine. It's it's all right. Uh, some of the episodes are better than others. Uh, the the one where it's what if T'Challa was Star Lord? That's that was really fun. <laughs> Um, are they all based off old comics or the new ideas for the series? I, I, well, I know that one of them isn't because there's a Marvel Zombies one. Um, okay, yeah. Although I kept yeah. expecting uh, Bruce Campbell to show up, but that's because my <laughs> only interaction with Marvel Zombies comics was reading Army of Darkness versus Marvel Zombies. <laughs> um, yeah. But, um, but yeah, it, it, it's weird actually because like because so, some of them are definitely better than others. Um, the Marvel Zombies one like is interesting, but like I'm I'm just a bit bored of zombies, so I don't really. Yeah. yeah. Um and yeah um what's really interesting is and minor spoilers is that um the last episode of it involves kind of bringing in elements from all the previous episodes. Um, okay. And in it, Gamora shows up from an episode that wasn't made. <laughs> <laughs> right. Which is weird. To the, And because the Disney Plus player um, is shit on the PlayStation 4, and uh, which is how I usually watch it, because I just watch it on my TV... Um, it, sometime, it will sometimes just not load up the actual... Um, like page for the show and it will only let you like continue watching it so i assumed the player had bugged and missed an episode and i had to go back and check to make sure i hadn't missed one huh. uh, but no it turned out due to i think it was due to covid related yeah, reasons covid shenanigans I guess, yeah, yeah one of them they just didn't get a chance to make it huh um and so yeah this you get a bit of the end point of it um because i think it's it's basically like what if tony stark ended up like out in out in like kind of Star Lordy kind of territory. I think is what it's supposed to be. But Gamora right, is like okay. the main character of it. Yeah. Um Is it a, is it an animated thing or is it like yes. a film? It's animated. It's it's CG um like the yeah, um okay. sometimes mo- a lot of the time they've got the actual actors to reprise their roles. I was going to say do they, they is haven't. it sort of do they the are the likenesses there or whatever so like you know Yeah, they've got the likenesses. Gamora looks it, like the yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's it's MCU explicit. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah okay. Um, so, and a lot of things like tie into like specific things, you know, from from the movies. So yeah. Like, okay. Um, I'm trying to think of a good example. Um, so yeah, there's like uh, one of them is what if Thor, you know, was raised an only child, and it's basically Party Boy Thor who nearly destroys the Earth with his endless rager. <laughs> um. There's um, one where, like, Killmonger um, saves Tony Stark from getting blown up at the start of Iron Man 1. Um, Yeah, there's one where T'Challa is taken instead of um, Peter Quill. Quill, Is it Quill or Quinn? I always forget. Uh... Anyway, oh, in, in, yeah. in, you, you, I was like, I know this. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Yeah. But the funny no, part about that is, like, oh. yeah. But the funny one about that is that it shows that T'Challa would have been a much more competent Star Lord. I mean, that yeah, not <laughs> like he literally manages to debate Thanos into joining him and giving up the Infinity Gauntlet. Huh. Which leads to a lot of conversations where where you see him like at parties. Being that person who always, always like, you know, I still maintain that my uh, my solution had merits. It's like, P- 
personally, as someone who spent too long on the internet, the idea of having a character knocking around who constantly wants to debate genocide is like, well, I now I feel right at home, like I'm on the internet again. Um, but yeah, uh, I, it's and it's interesting to see, you know, because some some people they got the actors back for, some they didn't. Um, some of the voice actors are pretty good, uh, like who who pick up the slack uh, from like actors who didn't come back. Yeah. Um, there's a couple that are a bit ropey. Um, the one for uh, Tony Stark isn't great. Um, but some you just wouldn't be able to tell. Um, and you go, oh, that wasn't them. Okay, well, they did a good job. Um, notably, um, uh, T'Challa was voiced by uh, Chadwick Boseman, isn't it? Um, yeah. It was actually voiced by him. Uh, so it's probably the last time that mm, character will, okay. be, will be presented by him. Um, so that's uh, it's, it's a bit bittersweet um, yeah. to see that, but yeah, uh, I, I definitely. What if is um, perfect? I'm not going to sit there and say like it's worth going out your way to watch. Um, but if you happen to be sitting in front of the TV and uh, you have nothing, you know, idea what to watch, definitely worse things. If you're if you've watched all the MCU things and like you enjoy that kind of speculative kind of thing. Yeah, you know, it's, it's quite. Been, I, mean, I know. Yeah. It's, I know. It's been in the the comics. The what if comics have been around. Yeah. For, I don't know a, a while, um, but it's nice. It's it's fun to see because I mean the, all the, the fans of this always speculate about what if this. So it's nice to see uh, what the official what if take of it is. Yeah, and just and just, for, are, just for interest, know. not to obviously stop people from doing their own what if this happened, of course. But yeah, um, but you know, even though I was like shitting on the multiverses earlier, like yeah, you know. Yeah. Like it, it's it's part of the whole thing that they're setting up now, you know, because between this and Loki, and you know, it was even mentioned like in Endgame and stuff, you know, like little elements they've been setting up for multiversey kind of things. Wonder Vision as well, like that's what they're going, that's what they're kind of aiming towards, and this mm. this kind of does it, and it does it through the framing device of it's the Watcher watching the different worlds, and yeah, right, okay, yeah, um. And like at the end of the day, as 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 much as I don't really understand the fascination with it, uh, a, a good you know uh, these kind of stories done well can be a lot of fun. And uh, most of these episodes were pretty fun, and even the ones that were that I didn't particularly care for, I didn't hate them or anything. They were just fine. Uh, and yeah, definitely worse things to watch. And speaking <laughs> of worse things to watch, um, <laughs> oh no, the big thing that I I spent far too fucking long watching over the last couple of weeks. <laughs> Yeah. I watched the entirety of Generation 1 Transformers. <laughs> yeah. I don't know why I did this, but I did it. <laughs> um, so, actually, I mean, I do kind of know what happened was... Um, it's like, you know, it's like the little, you know, the do- the meme with the little domino to the big domino. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I, I stumbled upon a channel called Transformers Reviews Done Quick. Yeah, uh, really good channel. Def- 100% recommend I feel like them. for most people, there'd be a domino before that, but yeah. You know how you just stumble <laughs> across, upon things on yeah, the internet? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's just, them, it's just like minute-long videos of them looking at like Transformers toys in a kind of comedic way. Um, it's just kind of, it's just kind of a fun little conceit. And, <laughs> yeah. um, and that rem- and that remind and, and that like, because I've got a handful of Transformers, because I used to really like them as a kid. Uh, so, you know, I... I I have a few modern ones. Like, I always wanted an Optimus Prime, so I got one of the Masterpiece Optimus Primes, uh, which every time that has ever been in the background of, like, a stream, someone who knows what it is notices it, and is like, is that a Masterpiece Prime? I'm like, yes, yeah, Masterpiece Prime. <laughs> um, and, uh, and so I've got a handful. Like, I got the ones from, like, things that I, I always wanted as a kid. So I got, like, a star screen yeah. as well. Um, and I noticed that my star screen wasn't really like it, some of its joints were really starting to seize up, and so and I knew that um, because I'd watched the um, new stuff. So that's probably why I actually stumbled onto that that YouTube channel uh, was because I'd been watching War for uh, like the um, whole um, War for Cybertron trilogy um, thing that was a bit shit. Um, and I knew <laughs> the toys from that were pretty good, and that there was a new star screen in that. So I was like, oh, I'm gonna go buy a new star screen. Um, like, because the new one is better than the one that I had, so cool, I'll go do that. 
Um, but they didn't have it when I went. But they had just released a Sharktacon. And I don't know if you know what a Sharktacon is. Uh, but they're from the movie, and I fucking love them, uh, because they're a goofy little shark thing that turns into a weird little dumpy robot that is adorable. Aww. In in both <laughs> forms, he is cute as hell. Like, seriously, just just Google Sharktacon if you don't know what they are, I and you will love them too. Uh, and they made a, a kind of movie-accurate toy of him. Uh, they've done a few over the years, but this is a new one. Um, and so I bought that instead. Which made me go, I should watch the movie again. <laughs> the movie is a fucking trip, man. Like, <laughs> it's a movie that I cannot say is good. Like, you sit there and you go, what constitutes a good movie? And you could argue that merely being entertained by it says it's good, but I'm entertained by Birdemic and there's no way that you can say that's good. So that kind of falls apart. It's just kind of a weird mess of inconsistent tone and bizarre music choices and a weird pacing to it. But it has a vibe. It has a a real kind of energy to it that's just charming to such to to a degree that I can't really like quantify. Like just how unreasonably violent it can be, like so early on um, the Decepticons, like, just kill a, a ton of named characters from the series. Like, I think it's, um, I think it's, it's either Prowl or Jazz. I can't remember which one I've had. I think it's Prowl. Um, gets, like, shot in the chest, and then it closes up, it does a close-up on his face as fire and smoke erupt from his eyes and mouth, and he dies. And that character is dead. Forever. That character doesn't come back. They're fucking dead. (laughs) And it does this all through the movie. Like, multiple characters die. Starscream fucking murdered by Galvatron. I mean, hell, Megatron dies. And famously, Optimus Prime dies. Um, And and it's just... And it does this kind of stuff all the way through it while still being the kind of kid-friendly kind of silliness to it. Um... And it's just... It's a lot of fun. I, 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 I absolutely adore it. And... I, I, there's some part inside of me that will forever be a child who can't help but cheer when the touch starts playing when Optimus Prime is fucking rolling in at the start and then when it starts playing at the end when Hot Rod becomes Rodimus Prime it's like fuck yeah Rodimus you do have Prime. the touch I didn't Rodimus Prime yeah Hot, hot Rod <laughs> becomes Rodimus Prime yes good. it's very good. stupid good. I'm glad look, I know that now look it's not high art man it's not <laughs> high art and this was the best of it. Um, <laughs> and so I watched that, and I was like, oh, yeah, I had a lot of fun with that. Then I found out that Hasbro had uploaded every single G1 Transformers episode onto the Hasbro Pulse channel on YouTube. So I'm okay. like, fuck it, I guess I'm going to watch the, watch all <laughs> of them. Um it is really fa- it's a really fascinating thing to watch because um, it is basically just a big toy advert because uh, if you know obviously the toys came out and they were uh, the toys were originally part of uh, a Japanese line called Diaclone um, with a handful coming from Micro Men uh, and there's an I think there's another line that a couple of things came from as well but they were kind of all mashed together which is why you have things like um one of them turns into a cassette player one turns into a gun and they have to shrink while some turn into cars but as robots they're all the same size that's where all of that fucking weirdness comes from is that the original right. toys were literally from different toy lines uh, okay <laughs> um and so they had to and, and so they had to kind of try and cobble that together into like a coherent thing and what's really interesting is, like, watching that after the movie is how death is just not a thing. It's it's such a kid's cartoon. Like, Optimus Prime, who, who I must remind you, was fucking murdered. Um, like, he, in one episode, is reduced to his component parts. So he's he literally, his head directs the other Autobots to where they need to go to find his other body parts, including his body, which has been turned into a robot alligator. (laughs) Okay. This show is amazing. (laughs) (laughs) Um, And it's, it's, it's just rife with animation errors all the time. Continuity basically doesn't exist. The constructor cons were either built on Earth or are millions of years old. 
it and and built Megatron possibly. It depends. Megatron either built them or they built Megatron. Who knows? It's fucking wild. Uh, they either didn't. They and it, it, that means that they technically their their forms that they have that are construction vehicles on Earth were also their Cybertronian forms, which makes no sense because Cybertronian forms are always a weird space car or space plane or whatever. Um. It's it, trying to cobble together canon from that show is very fascinating and just it will destroy your brain. Don't do it. <laughs> um, where it gets really interesting though is when it zips forward to season three. Um, special mention to the last episode of season two, which is called Bot and is the worst episode of the show uh, by a really long margin. Um, it is the most disjointed thing I've ever seen. It's, it, you know, when you when there's like an episode of something that is like not just wor- the worst episode of the show, but is so much worse than every other episode that it's shocking. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, so what, that's, what happened? Why why was this episode so bad? What happened? Why is it different? It's just really it, it's really disjointedly edited and written. Um, huh. People's motivations are all over the place. Megatron has a plan. But it is featured in the first like thirty seconds, and then in the last six minutes of the episode, the rest of the episode forgets about that. <laughs> um, you know the little transition that it does, where it flips between the Autobot and Decepticon logo, or sometimes the the Autobot and the Autobot logo. It's basically the transition from going to a different like perspective. Yeah, um, it does that about ten times in the first ten minutes. So is it? it feels just all over the place all the time. I don't actually know what multiple characters' like intentions are. Um, some college students build a robot that can fight Transformers uh, and has equal technological superiority to them. Um, this is not explored. <laughs> uh, the animation <laughs> errors are all over the place, um, even worse than normal. It's... It feels like they had to quickly make it in ten minutes before, like they got knocked off on a Friday. Like, it is truly bizarre how bad it is. Granted, there is another episode that is was so racist that it made the voice actor who voiced Shaggy in Scooby Doo um, leave the show um, huh. because they present a Middle Eastern uh, nation called Carbomia. Oh. And there is no positive um, representation of a um, Middle Eastern person in the entire episode. Uh, There's just... Yeah. yeah. Um, it The show has a bit of a, a... It was made in the 80s, so there are a bunch of episodes where its presentation of people who aren't white Americans is a bit tooth-drying. You know, you're a bit... Yeah, okay. But, yeah. but generally, it, it doesn't feel like they're trying to be hurtful. They're just, you know, they're just being... From the eighties, yeah. whereas that that's the one where it's like, oh yeah, that's pretty fucking bad. Um, but season three is interesting um, because despite having that episode in it, which I think is called Thief in the Night, um, for the most part it's a bit more serious. Still, death doesn't really happen in it, but it canonically happens after the movie, so the deaths that happen in the movie loom over the series large. Um. And because of that, it means that death feels like a much more like realistic thing to happen because it canonically has. And just because it doesn't happen again, really, I think there are some characters who disappear and probably are dead, but like it doesn't la- belabor it like it does in the um, in the movie. Um, so it's yeah, it's it's really fascinating how it how it does it. Um, now, of course, it ends with Optimus Prime coming back. Um, that's not really a spoiler because um, it, it, the last couple of episodes are called The Return of Optimus Prime. Huh. Um, yeah. Granted, he does come back early on in the series only for them to kill him again because the, the lunatics at Hasbro uh, want to torment children. <laughs> like, they say the reason... Like, Sorry. they just killed off, they killed him off in the movie because they were like, well, we want to replace the toy line, so we'll get rid of them. And they, they didn't really think that kids liked the characters enough to be traumatised by it. Uh, they were. <laughs> they were. Yeah. There's the title of that episode where he comes back and goes, the return of... Op- oh, no, wait, doesn't matter. 
I can't actually remember what it's called offhand. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, and then there's there's like a mini fourth series that was supposed to be like a big thing, and that's basically um, a, a really it was it called the Rebirth is what it's called. Um, it's basically like a three episode, a season four as it were, like a mini series. And it's basically to introduce the latest concepts in the toy line, which was Headmasters and Target Masters. Now, Headmasters are a really are, are, are from the toys, and what they are are you have a Transformer, and its head comes off, and that turns into a smaller robot, which is such a toy concept. It's great. <laughs> yeah. um, and they had to try and come up with a reason for that happening in the show, <laughs> and it's very stupid. Um <laughs> Target Masters was similar, except the the little robot turns into a gun for the big robot. Um, and so they had to try and come up with reasons for all this to like uh, justify the toys, uh, and they did badly. Uh, apparently, the they do it a little bit better um, in uh, the Japanese Headmasters cartoon because the G1 continuity continues on apparently in Headmasters and uh, ooh, Victory I think is one of the ones and there's another one I forget the name of um, and that continuity kind of continues continued in Japan but we didn't get them um, and they obviously do the Headmasters thing differently and there's also the comics who apparently also explain the Headmasters things uh, differently um, and apparently that's also better because they've got more time to do it if nothing else uh, but yeah, um, and getting to the end of watching like four fucking seasons of this, um, I was just left with this like real nostalgic kind of thing. It's like, this is shit, but I love this as a kid. And it's, it does occasionally have little moments of greatness uh, or little things that are just so charming that I can't help but love them. Like, um, they establish in the movie that the Dinobots, who are all idiots, um, love hearing the old soldier Autobot tell war stories. And it's just really cute. Uh -huh. um, there's also like little touches to the writing that are occasionally I, I occasionally really, I really like. So it doesn't make much sense, but it's established quite early on that Starscream was a scientist before he became a duplicitous, duplicitous little dick. Um... And every now and again, one of the writers remembers that. And so there'll be a thing where Megatron's got some big fuck-ass plan that's really dangerous. And Starscream will be like, um, Mighty Megatron, you shouldn't do this. This, this will kill us all. And he knows that because he's a scientist. He, he's, he is not supposed to be an idiot, even though he frequently is. Um... I guess the way of putting it is that he is an idiot, but he is an educated idiot. Um, and so occasionally I remember that. And there's little touches like that that I always kind of like. Uh, and this has meant that I have now made a wish list on Amazon that is just full of Transformers toys. Uh, I'm <laughs> not ashamed to admit it. And... Um, yeah, uh, if, if anyone wants to know uh, how to make me happy, uh, buy me Transformers toys. I don't even care what. I just like Transformers. Um, I'm remembering how much I love them. Um, and if someone else buys me Skylinks, then I, I I don't have to like justify how much it costs. Um, uh, but yeah, I, I I've just been left at the end of it with just this this kind of like I'm I'm not really like super bothered about like really like heavily diving into like the comics or anything. Like I do mean to because I heard some of the comics are really good, but like. Um, yeah, I've just been over the real soft spot for G1 that, like, is beyond pure nostalgia. Um, because it has some, it has a lot of adorable moments and a lot of characters who I, I genuinely just think are a lot of fun. Um, actually, really weirdly, uh, so there's a character called Cyclonus, who's originally from the movie, kind of, um... He's technically a reconstitution of an existing character, but it's complicated and I don't want to go into it. Um, <laughs> but he's voice. he was originally voiced in the series, um, I can't remember if he's voiced in the movie, by the actor that played Harry Mudd, um, the weird huh, okay. like, yeah. guy from um, Star Trek TOS. But he's pulling this like purring baritone voice that's really cool. <laughs> 
Uh, he does sometimes. His his performance is a bit inconsistent of it, but when he's really going for that kind of real purring thing, it is just a really cool voice. And I'm like, can I just have the Cyclonus reads a bedtime story like Cyclonus Jack and Ori? Like that would be really fun. But um, yeah, I'm sorry if you don't know what Jack and Ori is. It's a British show where celebrities, well, not necessarily celebrities, but often celebrities <laughs> will come and read bedtime stories on TV. Um, the replacement for it, which isn't called Jack and Ori on current TV, had Dave Grohl read bedtime stories. Uh, about yeah, I ago, saw that. That was amazing. Which is very cool. <laughs> um, but yeah, I don't know what I'm trying to fucking say. Transformers good. It makes me happy. Um, yeah. I mean, not objectively good. Not it was terrible. Um, <laughs> but I am, I am having to try and stop myself from being one of those people that collects, ev- like, tries to collect one of every type of a certain Transformer. I, I really want to collect one of every shark to con. Um like there's a reasonable amount of them. Not not the ones that were like done that were like different designs. I just want the ones that look like the G1 design so they look like the one from the movie. And I think there's only like 5 of them so it's not actually like wouldn't okay, be that hard. But some of them are quite expensive because ah. one of them is from the 80s. And um yeah. Funnily enough I did actually find out one of the ones I had as a kid which I upsettingly got rid of. Um, is actually kind of rare now. Um, it's Thundercracker, I think it's called, which is one of the lorries. Like he look, he's kind. Of, he, they did re- repaint him into Optimus Prime and resell him at one point because he's just a tr- truck, like a flat fronted truck <laughs> with a big trailer. Um, but apparently he's kind of um, hard to get hold of now because, well, hard's the wrong word, but he can be a bit expensive and he's prone to falling apart. Because all of the Transformers, well, most of the Transformers that had gold plastic, because of the mixture they used, crumble. Uh, Like, that gold plastic falls apart. Uh, To a point that it is even acknowledged in some comics of gold plastic syndrome being a thing. Um, (laughs) And yeah... um, so yeah, I kind of wish I kept him, if nothing else, because to see how he would have survived. Because mm. yeah, he has like a few hinges that are made uh, are made of um, gold plastic. Like I think his feet are gold plastic. So chances are those would have just exploded by now. <laughs> um, which is interesting. Um, anyway, I, I'm going to get through the last couple of my things quickly because I, okay, I, okay. I said I had a lot of things and I had a lot of thoughts about them, and I don't think <laughs> I communicated any of them coherently. Oh I'm no, it's one of those ones where yeah, as soon as you get to the end, you're like, oh, I had so much better things to say about that, but I didn't say any of them. Yeah, I think I just, sure. I was going to say I think I just waffled for like 40 minutes, but if if you're at episode 129 of the Misanthropod. <laughs> Yeah. You you have either accepted that that is your fate to hear me waffle, or you're into that, and I'm sorry either way. Or well, someone's making you listen. Are, are you suggesting <laughs> that this is like that listening to this podcast is an interrogation technique? Are you <laughs> suggesting that all of our views come from the CIA? <laughs> let's let's not look into it. It'll be fine. <laughs> it would not be the most ridiculous thing. The CIA have done, let's be honest. <laughs> so I do have um, a couple of games to talk about as well. Okay, oh cool. Yes, games, good. Um, since <laughs> technically this podcast is still about games. Technically. Mm. I think the description of it still reads something like that. <laughs> yeah. And I've just never got around to changing it. In the, f- f- what, how many, we've been doing this for like four, five years or something? Fucking hell. Um Yeah. Uh, so one is uh, a game that I was actually bought for my birthday by uh, Speaker D. Thank you very much, uh, Speaker. Um, and I played on stream, which is Yamawari. Um, oh, fuck. What's his full name? Uh, that's not his full name. Oh, God. Oh, God. Steam. Steam. Save me. Yamawari Night Alone, uh, which is a Japanese um, game that's done in kind of a, a cutesy kind of style. Uh, but it's a horror game. And you go around your city... Um, you know, doing little puzzles, get I get item A, move it over here, and and do the and do this, um, and then unlock this thing to try and find out where your um, sister and dog is, um, because um, content warning: um, if you go on, does the dog die? Um, then it will say of this game, yes, a dog gets hit by a fucking car in, like, the first minute Oof. of the game. 
Um, okay. It goes hard very quickly. You don't see anything because it's it's a you know it's two D sort of top down kind of thing. But you know, van comes along. You hear thud, yelp. There's blood. Um, it looks like the dog crawled away, and you have to. That's part of the thing of you trying to find your dog. Um, yeah. Okay. So yeah, if that's that's the thing you can't deal with, then this game won't be for you. But. Um, what kind of attracted me to it, and why it was on my wish list in the first place, um, was just the art style of it, like, of the monsters. Like, just really surreal shit. Like, early on, you're kind of walking along, and there's just these figures uh, around, and you can, like, throw rocks to distract them. Like, these black silhouettes, and some of them are twisted and distorted. But then, like, a huge mass of, like, eyes and mouths, like, walking along on all these, like, spider legs, like, just fucking chases you down a street. And there's just shit like that. Or, like, there's one, there's, like, an enemy that is obviously supposed to be a floating dead corpse. I know there's not no such thing as an alive corpse, but you know what I mean. <laughs> um, and it, like, just floats towards you, and you're just like, ah, fucking, okay, deal with that. Um... Yeah, it's just, it's like a dog with a human face at one point. It just kind of like leaps out the bushes and tries to fucking maul you. Um, it's just full of weird monsters all over the place. And like, they all have their own rules. There's like these eyeballs that are just these giant eyeballs that have mouths that just bite and chase after you. And like, they'll, and they kind of shoal around. So you have to try and like kite them around to try and get where you need to go. It's all very interesting. Um, it's a bit trial and error at times, but I, I dig it. I, I dig it. it do, like I say, it does have a lot of stuff that's like maybe a bit much for some people, but like, and that would be one hundred percent fair. Um, but yeah, it's it's cool. It's a cool game. Uh, the other one I've been playing is Sea of Thieves. Um, oh, okay. Uh, partially because basically everyone in like the Discord, uh, like the Snipe and Web Discord, has apparently got into this game at the same time. Okay. Um, Because I knew nothing about the game because it came out on, like, Xbox One ages ago. And all I knew about it was that the branded uh, Xbox One controller for it was sick as shit. And I really wanted it because it was, like, purple. (laughs) It was, like, a faded purple, like, uh, gradient purple with, um, like, bright turquoise buttons and markings on it. And it just just really popped. I I love the look of it. Um, But I didn't know anything about the game. I didn't know anyone who played it. Um, and it turned out that what the game was, was, oh, it's like a sandbox pirate MMO. Um, and you all just, and you can just join together with, like, a handful of friends, man a ship, um, and go about fighting skeleton pirates, or digging for treasure, or, like, you can do PvP, but if you do, fuck you. Um... <laughs> If everyone's into the idea of doing PvP, like if both both parties want to get into it, cool. But I've heard I, I've I've avoided it, but I've heard a lot of horror stories of people just being fucking tormented yeah. it, by people. Is being like a, can you can you avoid it if you want to? No. Ah, okay. Um, there are apparently private servers being worked on, but it's not a priority currently. So is my understanding. Right, yeah. Um, okay. if I'm wrong about that, uh, don't blame me. I heard it secondhand. Um. But what I have played, and I've played it with a handful of different people at different times. Um, but yeah, uh, I, I've had a lot of fun with it because it's like you start off and you're like, OK, so we've got a pirate ship and you've got to. So, you know, you you, you set off from a place, you, you pull up your anchor, you have to unfurl the sails, you have to angle the sail to the wind. Um, you don't have like a mini map that tells you where things are. You have like actual physical maps in, in the game. Mm. Okay. That you have to like f- plot out where you want to go and use a compass to get there. Um, and when you get like treasure things, it'll usually be clues that you have to f- like. It'll tell you you'll get clues to go to an island, and then you'll go to the island, and then you'll it'll give you clues of where to look. And so you try and work out the little things like if you've got your compass out and you hold it up to your face. Uh, and you walk forward, it does very deliberate footsteps. So when you get a, a thing that says, oh, 10 paces southwest from this point, you know what 10 paces are because it's built into the game to do that. Huh. Um, and like the sh- the more people you've got, the bigger ships can handle because, of course, you need someone to be handled, you know, un- when someone's steering, someone else can be manning the sails 
and someone can be like checking the map which is you know the big map which is at the other end of the ship and you know you can have people manning the cannons because when you get involved in a big fight you know you need cannon you know people to man the cannons and one person like be driving the ship and you might need someone to be repairing the ship because you accidentally sailed it into an island and so you need to (laughs) patch up holes or hypothetically um someone might accidentally harpoon a, a crate of tnt and blow up the entire ship um <laughs> i didn't do that but it'd be terrible if someone did that uh and 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 it was pure luck that one person managed to survive and rescue all of the treasure that was on board the ship <laughs> it just um, cool. could you play it you, do you need to play it with with friends you don't need to. You can play it on your own. Um, I haven't because um, I, I like. I, I, it's it's a game that I just really enjoy playing with people. Yeah. Um, and there's like, it, it's really hard to describe, but like there are moments, like the, the things I've described are like you know this whole kind of teamwork aspect to it, like little things like oh if you want to pull up the anchor, uh, the more people help do it at the same time, the quicker it goes. Or if you find a treasure chest, the more people are digging, the faster it goes. The game is mostly built around things are easier if you work together and coordinate, okay. um, which makes playing it with people just just kind of naturally feel good. But I think the best way to describe what makes the game kind of feel a little special is that you'll be sailing along and there's going to be stretches of time where you're just on the open seas. You're not being attacked by a megalodon. There's no ghost pirates attacking you. <laughs> Um, you're just going from one thing to the other and you know it could be sunset and you look out on this very pretty sky you pull out your hurdy-gurdy and Mm -hmm. you start playing a sea shanty and then one of the other people playing with you pulls out a banjo and starts playing the same song because it syncs up if someone starts playing a song and there's many different instruments in the game and you can all just play along and so just sailing along on this quite stylized but very pretty like vista uh, seeing the sea and the sky and all these things going off playing a sea shanty on and uh, together uh, whilst making little course adjustments it's just that that's just a a fun way to spend your time it's very cool yeah, that sounds um, sound lovely. Yeah, um, and to be honest, like even though I've not really invo- got involved with like real like PvP stuff, when you are skirting around the edge of it, it can be quite fun. Like we were playing playing with um, Longfang. Longfang actually bought bought us the game, so thank you, Longfang. Um, Longfang and Hobby Squig, um, and we were, I was playing with the pair of them and. We were trying to get to it, get to a place, and then we saw that there was a ship who had like I think it was Reaver colors up, which means they want they they're in, interested in PvP. And as soon as we got like close enough to see that, like because you know someone goes up onto the crow's nest and pulls out their their spyglass to like go look at it, <laughs> it just sound really cool. Um, and then we and then suddenly we see their sails on furl, and we go fuck. <laughs> um, so we so then we we partake in a thing of getting away from them because they're obviously really far away from us but um you know how fast you're going depends on your direction and how you, how you're going to use your sails and stuff and so like we take a wide berth and we do there's a fun handbrake turn thing you can do which is where you drop your sails complete well you, you know you pull your sails up completely drop anchor spin the wheel so you spin around using the anchor effectively as a pivot point and then huh. pull it up, drop the sails, and speed off in another direction to get away from things quickly. Um, and the sort of the, the little rush of getting away from a problem really quickly, and um, and just outmaneuvering someone who you don't want to get involved with, is just really satisfying and, and enjoyable. And yeah, like that what sounds great. And there was a little story thing, so I don't want to give away too, you know, spoilers about this because it... it... Okay, I'm, I'm going to give some minor spoilers here because I, I have to describe <laughs> how happy it made me. Okay, yeah. Um, so there are there is some integration with um, Pirates of the Caribbean because, again, this is the multiverse thing, apparently. Um, okay. But they do it in an interesting way, which is basically... The Sea of Thieves is like a legend in different like worlds. 
And so it is a place where people from different dimensions who are pirates can end up because they're searching for it because it's just a pirate thing. And so, you know, there is a, um, a tall tale you can do where the whole intro part of it is if you don't know what it is, and I didn't go into it and I did it on stream, I was like, this is real Pirates of the Caribbean vibe. And I don't mean the, the, the movie, I mean the ride. <laughs> like everything about it is really doing things like that and it turns out because it was it was referencing the ride and I'm and it gets to a point where I'm like no okay fuck yeah this is just referencing the ride okay cool and it ends up actually being a movie thing and it's like okay that's huh. kind of fun but there is an easter egg in that quest where you walk into an area and you have to go like oh, you have to really go out your way to do this as well like it's like a, a side objective they hid this and you walk into an area, and then the Secret of Monkey Island theme starts playing. <laughs> and you dig <laughs> through the area, and you find that someone who Guybrush slighted in the old games had got a crew together because Guybrush came, uh, allegedly came to the Sea of Thieves, and they were following him, and they got shipwrecked there. Um... It just put a big grin on my face um, <laughs> because it, it was doing it in a subtle way. You know, it wasn't just, yeah. Yeah, hey, yeah. let's go hang out with your new pal Guybrush and we're going to go and uh, and you're going to go walk into the bar um, of fucking, oh, fuck, what was it called? Um, Scum Bar and uh, speak to Mancomb Seepgood. Um, <laughs> that's one of my favorite jokes in a video game. <laughs> Guybrush Threepwood, that's a stupid name. Oh, what's your name then? My name is Mancomb Seepgood. <laughs> um, <laughs> what, yeah. I think my, one of my pets in WoW, uh, in uh, World of Warcraft, was called Mancomb because of that. Um, <laughs> and uh, and yeah, that just made that just made me happy. So I guess what I'm saying is uh, I don't like multiverse shit until I, until it's done well and then I love it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Just do it subtly. It's like I think that's the point. There is there is a definite line yeah, between you doing yeah. at one end there's Enter the Spider Verse and at the other end there's Ready Player One, the novel especially, um, mm. and at one end of that is bad and at one end of that is good. Let's try and be at the good end of it if we're just going to do multiverse shit all the time. Yeah, I was about to say. So it's like the you know. Like Ready Player One, it's, it's multiverse stuff for the sake of it. It's just throwing in as many names as it can in the hope that if you like some of them, you'll mm. like the thing itself. And then at the other end, it's the subtle stuff. But then, yeah, going back to the Spider-Verse, that's not subtle. That's the whole point of it is the different things. So yeah. it, isn't, it isn't just whether it's subtle or not that makes it good. It's just, yeah, it's interesting. It's, if they're trying to do something with it. Like, yeah. Yeah, you, yeah. At, at the good end, it can be subtle, but it can also be overt, but it just has yeah, something just to has... say and do yeah. with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Who Framed Roger Rabbit would also be a good example of that kind of just bringing in <laughs> yeah. lots of things. That's the original <laughs> multiverse movie. Um, and that did that, but it did it with a, a degree of like, um, kind. Of, it, it, well, it, that wasn't the story. The story wasn't, look at all the things you recognize, you pigs. Uh, which yeah. Ready Player One kind of is. Yeah. It's it's just a list of things. Although, admittedly, the movie is much better than the book. Um, I think, anyway. Because um, they actually give it a story that's kind of good. Well, not good, but it, it tries to <laughs> make something out of it. Um, I haven't read the sequel, nor probably will I. Um, no, neither have I. I I've heard enjoy very mixed book, things about it. Like, I think I just hadn't heard about it at all, so I hadn't... Hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's still not, you know, it was, yeah, it's a popcorn book as much as that yeah. exists. I, I find Ready Player One is a book that uh, you can enjoy provided you don't think about it at any point. Yeah. And the moment yeah, yeah, you yeah. think about it, you it will re- unravel in your brain. <laughs> yeah. um, and that's if you're not just instantly put off by, uh, yeah, you everything. know, <laughs> the bits and you know the bits that I'm talking about. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Um. But yeah, anyway, Sea of Thieves is quite good. Um, the last huh. thing I wanted to mention before we move on to questions uh, was yep. just a recommendation for a podcast that I started listening to. Okay. Um, which, um, if you know me, uh, or at least if you follow me on Twitter and have to put up with my bullshit, uh, you might know that I am uh, 
a fan's the wrong word, but I am a consumer of <laughs> things like ancient aliens and cryptid shows. Um, and I, I think they're mostly toss. Um, and ancient aliens especially has a lot of fairly unsavory undercurrents running through it when you think about it. Um, not least being full of liars. Um, but there is a new podcast called It's Probably Not Aliens, which is run by, um, or hosted by uh, Tristan Johnson of um, Step Back History and Scott uh, Nice Wonder, I think his name is. I always get it. I think that's how you pronounce his name. Um, from a channel called Nerd Sync. Um, and it's basically a show where they go through the bullshit they say on Ancient Aliens and tell you the actual history behind what they're talking about. Ah, okay, yeah. Um, the last one they did was about the um, the Easter Island heads and, like, you know, all, like all the mysteries around them and, like, what we know about them and what we don't know about them. And it's, it's genuinely really cool. Uh, it's, it's a really good podcast. That It's, it's relatively new still. Um, they only have a handful of episodes out. But I can definitely recommend it if you're the type of poisoned person <laughs> like me who find, is watching things like Ancient Aliens oddly engaging despite thinking everyone involved in it is a hack and a fraud. Um, yeah. We also have a Mothman video coming out soon, uh, which is related to <laughs> some of that. So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, it's a good podcast. Uh, it's probably not aliens. Give it a listen. Um, I would recommend it. Uh, but that's, that's, that is the end of my incredibly long, uh, yeah, you've done stuff. I, I've done, or more, I, I haven't. I've just watched a bunch of okay, television. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. But it took me a <laughs> long time to watch them because I was not just watching, oh, I'm going to watch a few episodes of this. No, I'm going to watch the entire, this. the entire library of this thing. <laughs> Uh, some of which was over, the, you know, was things made over the course of many years. So yeah. Uh, but yeah, so uh, I, I presume we have questions. We do have some questions. Yes, we do have questions. Okay, uh, what questions do we have, and what email address uh, should uh, people send those questions to? Uh, the drummer Matt at. Is that right? Yeah, it's been a while. <laughs> the the drummer Matt at gmail dot com probably. You know what I like about this podcast? Yep. We've never been good at it. Nope. Not not once. Not even by accident. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> um, what questions do we have? Okay. First up, Australian Nathan. So since you 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 this is this is gonna be you you, you answering on behalf of you and, and Snipe for some of these. Since you're branching away from GW stuff, mm -hmm. have you tried Frostgrove? I think we've no. had a question about Frostgrove before. I have not. Um, um, so Nathan said it's a, it's a skirmish scale model agnostic system mm. by Osprey Games, who I think are the same people who publish Gaslands. They are, yes. Which would make sense because Gaslands is sort of model agnostic as well. You just as long yeah. as it's the vaguely right size. Uh, Uses D twenty and is fantasy themed Mordheim style game about treasure hunting and wizard battles. Sounds cool. Like someone else, I feel like cool. someone else has pointed in this, in this direction, but no, I've not tried yeah. it either. Um, I will say, like, we're, we're less moving away from GW stuff because we're still going to be covering it. But, you know, we're just yeah. trying to cover other things as well. Yeah, well, they, they, they said branching away. Yeah. So you can still yeah, have yeah, a fair, GW fair, branch fair. and yeah. then you've just got other branches as well. <laughs> I mean, granted, when I said branching out, what have we done so far that's not been GW? Well, we we did one thing on Mantic. Okay. And then we did, we've done a video about Bigfoot, and now we're doing a video about Mothman. So we're not branching out in ways that are going to help us. We're branching out in ways <laughs> that are going to only make the algorithm be more confused. Yeah. But, you know, this is the same, same channel that does this video, or this podcast. So, like, I mean, <laughs> you know, this podcast is objectively not good for the algorithm. <laughs> No, it is not. It is very bad for it. Um, if if we hadn't have hosted the first, like, 70 episodes on it around then, I would have been like, mm, we should probably move this to its own channel. Uh, but there was too many on it to move it. Um, yeah. Thank you for the people that have stuck with it um, the entire time. Oh, my God. Um, <laughs> okay. Um, Nathan's second point was, I guess this was related to something that Snipe probably said at some point. Um Gachapons? Is that how you pronounce that? Gachapon? 
Gachapon. Um, yeah, the little, the little, um, like they're kind of like Kinder eggs, but without the chocolate, and you get them out of machines in uh, Japan. Yeah, I, I, I guess Snipe asked a question about that. So, so Nathan's favorite Gachapon, or if they could have a ideal gachapon or, or whatever the question was anyway they'd want one that gives out indie published video game download codes that's actually a really cool idea yeah because then you just try out like a bunch of random indie games that you might not have heard of or whatever yeah if you got I mean you just pop a couple of for a couple of quid and you just get a random thing but if you get like a physical little stick that'd feel like you'd actually got a thing yeah actually mm. if someone doesn't make something like that already go ahead and make it please <laughs> Um, next up, Aurora, a.k.a. Skaven Trans Girl. On a scale of one to five, how would you rate your fellow hosts, fellow hosts' hugging ability? Okay. Um... <laughs> well, I was just going to say I assume it's fives all around, but apparently there's a deeper answer. <laughs> well, the deeper answer is is that, yes, I would great five fives all around. Uh, you give absolutely wonderful hugs. Um, no. And... Likewise, back I to you, feel though. that um, the fact that I am literally married to the other host <laughs> means that <laughs> there does ha- there is a, a slight hierarchy there in the hugs. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, you, 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 different sort of hugs. It's and yeah. d- different sort of hugs happen. Yes, uh, but fives all round. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, good. Oh, this next one's good. So it's not a question, but Kieran wrote in to say, so referencing um, the Grot Rebellion we were presumably talking about last time, ANAB is pretty good. Mm. I think that was something you said, Rib. But how about no knobs, no masters? Yeah, that's good. I mean, I mean that's, that's, good. That's, pretty, that's pretty great, right? Yeah. <laughs> Um, that'd be like uh, it, it, the only problem with it is it doesn't have the nice acronym that, that I can easily translate into orc glyphs and then put yeah. on something. Okay. That's the, no, that's the only point. downside. But it is it is very strong. It is very strong. I can't deny. I can't deny that I do like it. <laughs> um, Arthur, um, I know you all have some experience with various idol games. Have we tried either Candy Box or the Kittens game? I I have not. I have no, not. Neither have I. I'm um, afraid. I'm I'm currently trying to wean myself off um, <laughs> uh, a, a, a adventure communist. Um, okay. Which is um, from the same people that did adventure capitalist. Um, and well, I've not tried either of those. Uh, I wouldn't advise it because I don't advise I mean, ever trying any no, of these games because no, they're just a time sink. Um, yeah. Then don't give you any. They are literally give you nothing and require even less. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, I'm trying. I'm, I'm starting to wean myself off. Like you know, you know, you can just miss that thing. It's fine. Because I do just idly play these kind of things all the time. And I'm trying to like, can it, like, if I'm going to be just messing around the game, I should stop. You know, actually play games that have something to them rather than nothing. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I was just an enamoured by Adventure Communist, not because of the theming per se, um, but just because it worked like Adventure Capitalist, but it had a bit more, like, it wasn't just all about one big number, it was about managing lots of different numbers. And I don't know, it's just, eh, eh, eh. But yeah. I, no one should probably play any of these things. Um, no. no, probably not. <laughs> right, oh. Uh, next up, Cillian. Um they're gachapon. Am I pronouncing that right? Anyway, gachapon. Probably. Uh, loaves of bread. It's assuming that they're somehow kept like fresh and warm and not like in these machines for like months on end. I can get behind. Uh, I mean, it. Okay, so normally in gachapons you'll get like say a little figure or something. So I'm thinking like they might mean like a little like plastic facsimile oh, of okay. a baked good oh they could be cute which i'm like 90 percent sure actually exists <laughs> i'm pretty sure i've seen them <laughs> um <laughs> but that is also because there's gachapons like pretty much fucking everything at this point so <laughs> um 
But yeah, um, that could be fun. Actual bread, that does suffer, have a lot of logistical concerns, unless it's that yes. kind of bread that you get in, like... You know, if you go to, like, B&M or whatever, and you can find those, like, cheap hot dogs that don't... Uh, where the they have hot dog and bread in them, and it doesn't need to be refrigerated or anything, and it's, mm. and it's like, best before date is, like, next year. <laughs> um, yeah. And you're like, oh, that is not meat or bread. <laughs> Mm. Um, yeah. If it was like bre- that, then maybe it could work. Yeah, they had bread vending machines in various bits of France. How does that work? I think that like because you have to be within like I'm not sure if it's an actual law, but it's what people were saying. They you have to be within like walking distance of a bakery. So for like little tiny villages that just it isn't you can't sustain having an actual bakery there. They'd have ones that come out in the morning in a van and like put the baguettes in a machine that kept them warm, and then you could like pop them out with. Putting some money in. Oh, okay. Yeah. Quite fun. There's also yeah, a pizza vending cool. machine. Yeah, I like There's that. There's a pizza, pizza vending machine around the corner from us, actually. No yeah. idea how that... We, we never ventured to try that because we were like, well, if we're trying this, we need to do it on a day where the next day we're doing nothing. Because pizza vending machine might not do good to your insides. Yeah, that's definitely going to wreck never every part of your, deci- your body. Yeah, we never quite decided that there was a day that we wanted to write off so badly. <laughs> <laughs> fair, fair. It's um, uh, it's like if you found like a vending machine with sushi in it, you go, "I'm curious," no, but, um, but I not don't that curious. But I don't think I'm ever going to be that curious. Okay. Anyway, Cillian's main question: um, being the eminent scar punks of the 40k community, <laughs> my question is, what bands and or <laughs> I wrote dongs, but I think I meant to write songs. <laughs> <laughs> what bands and or songs would you pair with the armies and forces of the forty first millennium? So some some examples. They had a whole list of some. I've picked a couple of my favourites. So Dark Angels, We Will Fall Together. That matches quite well. Okay. Uh, yeah, Spa- yeah. Space Wolves, Hungry Like the Wolf by Real Big Fish, checks out. This this one was my favourite. Craft World Elder, just in general, the arrogant sons of bitches. <laughs> <laughs> which, which works I don't think quite it well. Doesn't really fit with the music as uh, as I no, am. Uh, yeah. No, I, I'm but... a big fan of Jeff Rosenstock's work, but uh, <laughs> yeah. but um, uh, it's, it's the name. It's, but yeah, it's pretty good. Um, you know what I'd say? Uh, there is a band who are a um, who are, were like an English. I don't I don't think they're still going, but they're um, a, a ska band um, called Snuff. Uh, they feel like they'd be like the orcs because they've got there's a bit of street punk about them. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'd make I'd make that connection. Um, that's the one I'm doing because if I if I if I carry on with yeah. that, that's something where th- those questions I will end up like naming things all day yeah. long. Yeah. Okay. It's well, I, I, I was my my main thought of, uh, was um, probably something like choking victim for like nurgly armies. <laughs> that seems to probably match quite well. Um. um <laughs> Maybe, um, maybe their song "Sweet Dreams." Uh, Sweet dreams are made of these genocide by chemical means. <laughs> I mean, that's just the Imperium, probably. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right, Sepulchre have grown. What this this one might be directed more towards snipe, but we will give it a go. What is the controversial food? So, in the vein of cheese or avocado and the like, that you actually like. So, one that some people are like, ooh, ooh, but you actually like of it. Um, I don't know. I'm a very picky eater, um, so I don't know if there is much. Mm, um, yeah, you do think much. Yeah, I think it would most... <laughs> that's true. That's true. I, I think it'd be more a case of like, uh, <laughs> like, oh, wow, you, you like that? I wouldn't have thought that just because it's a food that, like, it doesn't feel like you'd like. Mm. Um, I don't know. I actually don't know. Um... Is there anything that you 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 like that's like? Well, a I like it's not so thing? controversial in France, but when we were there, we ate a lot of um, tartare de boeuf, which is basically it's just raw chopped up beef with raw chopped up onions and capers and a few things and a raw egg, and that's it. You just yeah, that it. sounds that sounds fucking horrifying. Which yes. like um, to to a British person, like ugh. in fact, it's to the point where it's a British person to anyone who watches who has watched Mr Bean. It's the it's the the one from the scene where Mister Bean orders something, doesn't know what it is, and then has to spend the whole meal like s- trying to hide it and put it in a bag or something. Oh, okay. If anyone's ever remembers that from watching that as a kid, or possibly as a grown up, that's that's what he's ordered. Okay. But yeah, it's it's raw beef and and raw everything, and it is delicious. It's so good. <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. But um, yeah, I, I can understand why a lot of people wouldn't like that. Yeah. Um, and did you start, I, uh, when I was a kid, I loved eating like just bowl full bowls full of prawns. Huh. Um, 
But then I had a, a slightly dodgy batch, and then I could never eat them yeah, again. Yeah, that can happen. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just, I think that's just seafood in a nutshell. <laughs> yeah. Oh, this is an interesting one. Um, so Nick wrote in. He he came to the gig last weekend. Oh. Um, hi Nick. Hope you enjoyed it. Hello. I think they did from the email. <laughs> um, so the question is, how do we prefer to be? A, so this is again more more towards you and you and Snipe probably, but. How do you prefer to be approached by internet strangers? Do you mean like so, if you see us out in the wild? Yeah, 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 yeah. So if you see you either at a gig or I guess Warhammer World or or wherever, um, <laughs> do you mind people coming up to you and do you want them to, you know, be a bit sort of say hi and then bugger off quickly or do you want to <laughs> hang out or you know that sort that sort of thing? Uh, well, okay. Um, so we do get recognised a fair bit when we go to like. Warhammer World, if it's on a busy day or whatever. Um, so this this does happen happen a fair bit. Um, so if you do see us, feel free. You can just come up and say hi. Say hi. Um, like, because we frequently get people going, are you Snipe and Web? And we're like, yes, we are Snipe and Web. And they go, hi, that's fine. No, not. It's absolutely not a problem to come up and say hi to us. Um, that's That's not a problem. Um, as regards, like, you know, having a chat, like, it, that's really contextual, like, um, yeah, yeah, of course. you know, if, if we're, you know, like, sometimes we've been recognised, like, in Sainsbury's or whatever, <laughs> um, and, you know, maybe we're not gonna stop and have a conversation there because we're in there getting our groceries, um, but if you still want to say hi or whatever, that's fine, like, I, I, we don't have an issue with that, um, but you know, if if like say we're at a gig, um, you know, can I, you know, chances are we'll have a bit of a chance to actually have you know a chat if you want to talk to me about talk to us about something. But you know, just understand that like, you know, we are our own people and we might have to rush off and do something. We might not have the time to have a chat or like say if you see us at Warhammer World and we're playing a game, we are there to play a game. <laughs> so like, yeah, we don't mind chatting, but like also we have come there to do a thing. So just just. Just get, extend us the same same courtesy you give to anyone else, you know, um, and that's all it is, you know. But honestly, we don't mind people coming up and saying hi. Don't feel nervous about it, like, because sometimes people say, "Oh, we're nervous to come say it's, hi." And it's, it's like, don't feel nervous about coming and say hi. You're, you're, you're like spiders. The, the chances are you guys will be more nervous than than, than whoever the person is coming yeah. up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We're just weirdos <laughs> off the internet. Like, don't fucking worry about like be nervous about speaking to us. Fuck no. Um, but I mean, also, if you are, that's also very valid. Yeah, it's to- totally fine. Like, I, I, I am, <laughs> I am a person who deals with anxiety, so mm. I understand. Um, but yeah, try. You don't worry about it. If you want to come say hi, come say hi. Uh, it's totally fine. Um, let's. It, it feels that you know. It, may, it allows us to feel uh, to have an ego boost <laughs> that any human knows who we are. It's quite nice. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, don't worry about it. <laughs> Um, okie dokie very last one fishers eat dishes oh um, that is a name not a statement <laughs> I mean it is both um, but two parts so first off me and some friends had an idea for a band and we'd like your input so okay. first off some context the word scold scald s-k-a-l-d oh it was in the uh, like Nordic storyteller thing yeah it's an old name for a b- p- bard or poet or, yeah. or something or storyteller I guess um, so their band, they want it to be ska punkish, but everyone plays old instruments, so lutes and old style drums and bagpipes, and of course a hurdy gurdy. <laughs> of um, course. So it's the band is going to be called Scold Punk, <laughs> which I mean, yeah. yeah no, my initial I'm, thought yeah. is like in the in the vast tradition of of pun based ska band names, that's pretty good. Yeah. It's, yeah. You know, it's, it's it is a tradition at this point, so that's yeah. <laughs> Two tone scald. Um. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Depending on which yeah. sort of scold you're going for yeah, <laughs> yeah strong yeah strong, no I'm, I'm i'm behind this i'm behind this it, idea it, it's all on hold slightly until they can afford to buy loots bagpipes and hurdy gurdies <laughs> but, <laughs> yes so that yes. is a, a slight stumbling block to it. all of those instruments are quite uh, expensive yeah. it's not like oh yeah i want to go buy a guitar well i can well i've got like 70 quid i can go buy a cheap one like a cheap yeah. electric guitar um, yeah, those are instruments yeah. you kind of have to buy an expensive one because cheap ones don't exist. Yeah. But, I mean, if it ever gets off the ground, keep us posted. Yeah, absolutely. That sounds like a lot um, of fun. And their question. What is your favourite not-dinosaur-age prehistoric animal? 
So anything from before now, but not the time of dinosaurs. So either before dinosaurs or after. Ooh. If that's not too confusing. Um, and I don't think I've got mm. a particularly good an- answer for this, to be honest. I'm I not mean, sure. mammoths, I... mammoths were just after. I don't know there was possibly a crossover. I mean, if, if the film Ice Age is to believe. But, <laughs> they were um... a long time <laughs> Okay, to the dinosaurs. Good. See, a very is... long time. Okay, good to know. Uh, hairy elephants. I mean, how? How? Yeah, they're great. Like, if we're just talking like prehistory kind of stuff, um, or even just like, I mean, if we're talking like just extinct animals, um, like, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm willing to extend. I really like thylacines. Um, Ooh, what are they? Tas- Tasmanian tigers. Huh. Cool. Um, yeah, they're, they're, they're like. The mouths open really wide. They looked kind of like wolves, but were just an example of convergent evolution because they, I think, they were a marsupial. Um, oh. So they weren't actually related to them at all. Um, they had a stripy butt. Um, good, good, good. Hence the tiger um, part. Yeah, they were just really cool, but they just, um, from what I understand, and feel free to correct me if I'm wrong about this, but they they, they were a victim of um, both humans colonizing their areas and a bunch of, like, just natural things happening to them at the same time that just kind of really fucked them over. Mm. Um, so that, yeah, they just couldn't survive um, where they were, and the last one died out. Um, like, there is some footage of it, um, like, really early footage um, uh, from the last one that died in captivity, and f- they they're kind of like borderline a cryptid at this point because sometimes people <laughs> think they see one, but then but they're not sure because there's never been any evidence of one. So they're pretty sure they've been extinct for like a hundred years, but yeah, they're not hundred percent sure. Um, but on slightly more to the actual nature of the question, I do think uh, sea scorpions are really cool. Uh, which are an ancient, like, undersea um, arthropod. Um, that, yeah, were, and they got really fucking big, and they had big claws, and they were just kind of cool. Huh. So there you go. That's a couple. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure Snipe has way more dramatic answers. <laughs> um, if you want to go if you want to go really fun, you could say, like, uh, the coelacanth uh, that turned out to not actually be extinct, and there's actually fucking loads of them. We just thought they were extinct <laughs> and were, like, a prehistoric fish. And then we're like, no, there's enough of them that they can be fished. Um, oh. Okay. I mean, not that that's ever stopped anyone from ever fishing I mean, anything, no, ever. Yeah. Um, but um, it's they're not endangered or anything. Um, huh. Yeah, they're that's just a really... Like, oh, you know this extinct animal? Yeah, you can just eat it. And some of the, and what and like at least one species of them is a really beautiful like color of blue. Um, yeah. Also, uh, have fun trying to spell coelacanth um, yeah, we'll if you do don't know how it's spelled, uh, because it's a fucking nonsense thing, uh, nonsense word <laughs> that just is impossible to know how it's pronounced from looking at it. Uh, but yeah, yeah. no. Um, Good. So that is yeah. that was the last question. That was the last question, and that it was a was. podcast uh, that, that despite podcast. having one whole less person, ended up being just as long as a normal episode. Yeah. Uh, good. It's a good job that uh, I can talk endlessly about bullshit, uh, almost as if that is <laughs> my know, job. I was, expect- I was honestly, when you started mentioning um, arthropods, I was expecting another half an hour, to be honest. So. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, here we go. This is time well. <laughs> well, you see, there's some lot of uh, horseshoe, uh, horseshoe crabs. Do you want me to tell you about horseshoe crabs? Um, uh, as long as you don't mention di- what's the, um, convergent evolution or whatever it was you... <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, where things things evolve the same thing down different paths. Uh, like how um, oh, God, no. uh, cephalopods <laughs> um, evolve a very similar kind of eye to how mammal eyes work, yet despite being not even remotely similarly um, related. Yeah. Um, so that's why, like, you can look at like an octopus's eye, and it looks remarkable, or a squid's eye, and it looks kind of like a mammal's eye because it's the same. They work the same way, and normally things that are that far separated from us don't have eyes that work in the same way. So, hmm. as far as my understanding goes, yeah. or you can get into car, uh, you know, a similar kind of convergent evolution thing, which is a uh, carcinogen carcinogization or something like that uh, which is the propensity of arthropods to become crabs um all, all things become crabs yeah all all all, all of um <laughs> all arthropods um become crabs eventually it is arthropod i'm using the right term for like oh i um, don't know I, I only said it because you said it so i mean yeah. you could both be wrong now 
Because, yeah, 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 it's an anthropod. Yeah, we're an anthropod. Um, an arthropod. They're an arthropod. Okay, yeah, yeah. So we are an anthropod. It's, it's, the, in the, it's, it's in the name. It's in the, the name uh, of the podcast. Because yeah, it's in the name of the podcast. But yeah, arthropods, yeah, yeah um, they're all, uh, they have, I think, on five separate occasions, separately evolved into crabs. Um, I mean, if you could be a crab. I mean, yeah, you probably, actually, I probably wouldn't choose to be a crab, to be honest. Because as previously mentioned, someone would probably eat me. Yes, that is quite likely. Um and on that cherry note, we should end. Yes. On the bright side, you could be a Japanese spider crab who are metal as shit. Huh. I'm pretty metal. <laughs> There's something about that kind of, mm, yes, I'm pretty metal. This is the most adorable thing I think I've ever heard out of your mouth. <laughs> And I don't mean that in an insulting way, even slightly. No, no, not at all. No, not at, no. All. Not uh, at all. Anyway, let's let's um, yep. let's end this. Uh, whatever this was. Uh, thank you very much uh, for listening to the podcast. Uh, hopefully, next time Snipe should be back here. And um, as I say, um, yeah, uh, podcast questions go to the, the email we said earlier, and uh, we will bid you good day for now. Uh, goodbye. I'm not used to being the one that ends these. I'm confused and scared. Please help me. End the podcast now. Say goodbye, okay. Matthew. <laughs> Bye. Goodbye. <laughs>